In Richmond, one of Scott's long-term patients is enjoying a few quiet cuddles with devoted owner Sarah. Badger is our 12 and a half year old Irish Wheaton Terrier that we've had since he was about six months old and he's been the best dog we could have ever wished for. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't find him dressed as a witch or a fairy or a, you know, he's just been an amazing part of the family. But Badger's been battling a massive low-level malignant tumour. Sore, isn't it? And despite two major surgeries, it keeps growing back. So we're sort of worried that if it isn't addressed, it's going to split the skin because it really is stretched. And it's like, sort of, it goes all the way underneath, sort of almost like a sort of tennis ball size and then this bit at the underneath. So it's, it's pretty grotesque. We sort of promised ourselves that we wouldn't operate again. Scott's done both operations previously and um, we kind of drew a line under it and went, right, that's, we're done. We're not going to do that again. But it's sort of got bigger and bigger and, you know, he's relatively happy in every other way and we're now kind of like back in the situation of, what do we do? Badge, do you want to go for walkies? Yeah. Oh, come on, Bella. Oh. Come on, boys. And let's go. Good boy. We've got to go and see Scotty. OK? Come on. Good boy. Got to get you up the hill. Okay. As Sarah heads in to see Scott, she's bracing herself Boy, for the possibility on. that Badger will need a third surgery. Come on then. Let's do it. That's a good boy. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, Sarah. How are you? All right, here we are again. Oh, hello, Badger. How's he doing? All right. Yeah, he's doing OK, but, you know, the lump's... Really big now, so I think... See, um, can't you? Yeah, I think it's okay. kind of decision time, so... Another chat with Scott. Oh, oh do you want to take a seat? Yes. He'll be right with you. Just know you're here. Thanks, love. All right. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Scott. Hello, Hello Beg. How are you, mate? You are right? You're a very happy boy today. Goodness me. I can see why you've come in. Yeah, it's, it's not slowing down. It is not. It's quite monstrous at the moment, isn't it, mate? All right, all right, yes. all right. Yes. Oh, right, is that right. a bit tender? Come oh, here. bless you. Come on, let's keep this. Let's keep the happy, happy boy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the waggy tail is what we want. Come on, then, Badge. You're going to come this way. Come to the concert come room. On. Come Good on, boy. Good boy. Well done. Good lad. Didn't you come? There we go. Well done. So it's been a few weeks since we've seen each other, and unfortunately, that has grown, hasn't it? Yeah, it's definitely. Um, it's not slowing down. No. And how's he being affected by it, do you think? Well, I think slowing down. <laughs> he's, um, you know, he's not as inclined to sort of go for a walk as much as he was. You can tell it's just really cumbersome and it's awkward. He's finding it hard to find a comfortable spot to sit down. This is a massive tumour that's really pulling his weight off to one side, which will be affecting his balance, will be causing an increase in arthritic development in the back legs. There's a lot of negatives to this thing, besides the fact that it's stretching the muscles that it surrounds and causing him discomfort. He still wags his tail whenever anyone goes near him. He still wants to go for a walk, albeit a short one. So I feel like we're doing him an injustice if we just leave it. OK, well, but let's... It's, oh, it's a very hard decision, really. It is, it is, and we flip-flop about it constantly whenever we see each other, don't we? This is not the first time that we've considered removing Badger's tumour. It's a slow-growing sarcoma, which is a malignant type of tumour, but it's one that doesn't tend to spread. It just continues to regrow in the same site. Now, unfortunately, the size of this tumour and where it is means that we can't ever remove it completely, so unfortunately, it keeps growing back, and this is now the third time that's happened. So I think what we might have to do is just pop a muzzle on him. All right, champ, it's Hannibal Lecter time. Yeah, come here, bud. Come on. So he's a gentleman until he's challenged, and then yeah. he turns into a bit of a, a bit of a beast. Yes. <laughs> don't you, mate? Hey, no, you just know your own mind, don't you? Yes. Okay, you ready, Sarah? I'm gonna pop him up. Me to lift, or you? No, oh, we'll go. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. This tumour is absolutely huge. You sort of see it coming out from his chest. It's almost like he's got an udder, isn't it? Like, it's just... It's like a, a cricket ball, isn't yeah. it? And, and it's sort of that hard as well. Yeah, it's huge. There's positives and negatives. Yeah. But I think the thing is, is that he is a lovely, otherwise healthy family dog. Yeah. Except for this. So if I can rid him of this one last time 
and give him the, you know, old age, genteel life in Richmond that he deserves, well, I think he deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. The worst thing would be for him to not come through surgery. I think, I, you know, we haven't got a choice now. He's just, you know, he's in too much discomfort. I think we've got to do it. So, um, yeah, I am worried. Cheerio, Boise. Be good. Come through it. OK. All right, All right thank okay. you. OK, love to you and the family. See you later. All right, bye. see ya. Bye. Oh. Say bye, Mummy. Say bye. Oh, I know. You've got to be such a brave boy. Yes, you do. Kanye. In Isleworth, John is arriving at the clinic with a lost kitten. Hi, uh, I've just found this kitten in a bush. In a bush? <laughs> yes. Nurse Lily is on reception. Basically, I dropped the kids off at school, and as I was going back to get in the car, I could hear this meowing in the bush. I had a little rummage around and eventually found her sort of three quarters of the way up this bush. Just a little ball of fluff, just crying away and a bit dishevelled. As you can imagine, she looked like she'd been stuck there a little while. So just in a bush on this road? Yeah, literally just 200 yards down the road there. What we can do is check her for a microchip and just see whether she's got an owner out there who's missing her. OK. <laughs> Maybe you just hold her for a second. Yeah, no problem. The little stray that John has brought in is adorably cute. I think she probably does have an owner out there somewhere because she's in quite good shape and she's very friendly with people and a lot of strays generally aren't. But if we don't have a microchip, it's going to be really difficult for us to find that owner. But we'll give it our best shot. All right, here we go. So we make sure we check all over because they can move. OK. Hey, mm. missus. Doesn't look like she's got one, unfortunately. OK. Um, what we'll do is we'll keep her downstairs and then um, we'll get our vet Phoebe to check her over and make sure she's all OK. As a stray, what we have to do now is keep her for seven days and then we put a poster in our window and we'll pop her on our Facebook group as well. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully her owner will come forward in that time. If not, we'll start looking for a new home for her. OK, lovely. Thank you very much. No worries. Bye-bye. Bye. Any strays that turn up at the clinic are given a full health check. Hi, Phoebe. Hey. Hello. Oh, who's this? This is a little kitten who was found in a bush up the road. Oh, it was a stray? Yeah, a member of the public just brought it in. Oh, my God, it's purring. I know. I think it's a girl, but I'm not sure. Oh, well, let's have a look then, shall we? Yes, it's a girl. <laughs> She's young, though. She must only be about three or four months. Mm. Lily brings down the cutest little kitten downstairs. I can't believe that it's a stray. Phoebe is now going to look for clues about the little kitten's age or history. Mm, little baby tea. Definitely young, then. Definitely young. She also wants to make sure it has no underlying health issues. Considering that she's literally been fished out of the bush, we'll just give her the full health check over. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the check in the heart and chest. What's that? That all sounds fine. Did you hear anything under all that purr? <laughs> just about. <laughs> Overall, she's in really, really good health. She's a bit hungry, as you'd probably expect, but that's something we can easily fix. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's already chewing on my fingers. <laughs> Let's get you something to eat, Poppet. <laughs> Come on, then. Phoebe's had a good check over of her, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with her. You're very hungry, aren't you? The little kitten will stay at the practice, and hopefully her owner will be found soon. What do we think of this? You think that will find your owner? Hi, team. Hey, you're up. Hey, yes, yeah, so. Badge is back, Nath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says with a worried look in his eye. <laughs> He's a really sweet dog, but this is not the best patient. Agreed, hence the muzzle. At Scott's Richmond Clinic, Badger is about to undergo major surgery to remove the massive tumour growing on his chest. 
Reagan, I don't know if you've met Badger. No, I have not. That is crazy. Yeah, it's not his most attractive feature. He's a champ. No. Unfortunately, I'd love to say that this is the first time we've removed it, but it's actually our third. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, a slow-growing sarcoma. It doesn't actually spread anywhere else in his body, but just continues to want to live on this side of his chest. And you can just think how taut. It's so tight, you can feel it. Yeah. And so it's stretching all those muscles, and that's what's so uncomfortable. That's why you're panting all the time, aren't you, mate? Because you're just a little bit low-level uncomfortable all the time. Oh. So this time, third time lucky. Look how vascular it is as well. With Badger's fur shaved off, the huge scar from his two previous surgeries is clearly visible. Right, here we go. It's the line Scott is using to go in for a third time. It has some semblance of being fatty, but it's granular. It just doesn't have any structure. I mean, once you get your finger, look, I mean, it just, it's just soft. Going in to remove this tumour, it is just hideous. It's just everything that you think would personify cancer. It has no structure to it. It pulls out like kind of wet porridge. There's a lot of blood supply to it as well. It's just huge and it's just horrible. The nasty tumour is especially confronting for Scott's new nurse, Reagan. No, I didn't expect it to be... Well, I, I don't really know what I was expecting, but not... Not this. Not this. No. No, no not quite. Yeah. 20 minutes into the surgery, Scott is becoming increasingly concerned. Badger's actually losing quite a bit of blood removing this because it's just so vascular. It's uh, within all the muscle layers of the chest and we can't control it because the blood vessels are... That there's no rhyme or reason to them. They're not growing in the normal way. So I'm just doing my best to be... to remove as much of the tissue as quick as possible. But it's, uh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking at the moment. After 25 minutes, Scott has removed as much of the tumour as he can safely manage. I'm just going to... I'm going to pull out, close it up. It's just, I've got as much out as I can. But suddenly... Have you got a heartbeat? Badger's condition starts to deteriorate. Oh, yeah, I have got, got one. It's not very strong. Yeah, I just need to keep a very close eye on that. OK, just have a listen that he's definitely, definitely got a pulse still. Reagan, put your hand underneath and feel the femoral pulse. I'm not sure if I'm feeling Can you get, just get James for us? Yeah, yeah just, just, just go, go run into the pump the OK, just have a listen that he's definitely, definitely got a pulse still. At Scott's Richmond practice, Badger's tumour removal surgery has now turned into an emergency. Reagan, put your hand underneath and feel the femoral pulse. I'm not sure if I'm... Can you get, just get James for us? Yeah, just, yeah, just go, go run into pump up the sus, James. With Badger's condition rapidly deteriorating... Can you just put your arm up there and just, just have a feel for a pulse? Scott has called in vet James to assist. You can't feel the pulse? All hands on deck. I still am in a situation where I'm sterile, trying to complete the surgery because we can't stop the anaesthetic until I've closed this massive wound. So it does mean that I am hogtied. I can't use my hands, so I need my colleague James to come in and help with the CPR. He's taking a breath. That's a breath, him. Yeah. All right, the breathing is the really important thing, so just keep on breathing for him. Don't stop. I put him on two and just see how it goes. Yep. Have you got a heartbeat? Can you hear? I can, oh yeah, I have got got one. It's not very strong. Is that him then? Let's yeah. throw some adrenaline at him. Same dose. Precious minutes are ticking by. But now, Badger is not responding. Can you feel anything? I can't hear anything. No adrenaline now? Yeah. Anything? Badger has now been unresponsive for over six minutes. And Scott is forced to make an agonising decision. OK. OK, 
Okay, I'm just gonna call it, guys. Okay, okay well, good work, everyone. Okay. It's one of those things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's surgery still. Yeah, you can't really. Can't leave it the way it was. No. I think the looks on everyone's faces, I think, says it all. Everyone's completely gutted, and especially Scott. Okay. <laughs> Scott now has to make a heartbreaking phone call. Oh, hi, is Sarah. Hi, um, Scott here. Hiya. Um, yeah, I haven't got good news for you, I'm afraid, Sarah. Yeah, he's, he passed away on the table, I'm afraid. Oh, my God. Oh, what happened? Tell me. I got probably two thirds of the tumour out um, and uh, was just sort of cleaning up the edges before closing. He stopped breathing and this time we couldn't get him back. Oh, Lord. I just was so sure he was going to come through the surface. So, so, did, so did I. That's why I just, I'm like, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's devastated, as you would imagine. Um, straight away as a parent, she's thinking about the kids and thinking about the fact that she decided not to tell them before the surgery, thinking that they would worry. And so now, obviously, they're going to be so heartbroken that they didn't get a chance to say goodbye, <laughs> which is just, you know, thinking about my kids and thinking about that happening to my dog, it would be very hard. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad, bad day. Yeah. Sorry, mate. At the Isleworth Clinic, the lost kitten is making herself at home with Nurse Alicia. It's been three days since the little stray was brought into the clinic, and so far no owners have come forward to claim her. But she does have some unexpected visitors. Hello. Hi, I brought my wife in to see the kitten. Oh, yes, I remember you found her in a bush earlier, didn't yes. you? Yes. OK, perfect. What I'll do is I'll just go grab her for you and you can say hello. Thank you. <laughs> You look like you're having fun. We are. I've got the gentleman who found her upstairs. He's oh, really? brought his wife in to say hello. Oh, fabulous. Come this way. Come on, you've got visitors. <laughs> John found the little stray and hasn't been able to forget her. Here she is. And he's hoping his wife, Katie, will be equally okay. smitten. Can you have a cuddle? She's adorable. So if nobody comes for her and you want her, we can take her out. We want you. I think we do. But by law, the practice has to wait seven days to see if an owner comes forward before they can rehome the kitten. So John and Katie have another four days to wait. She is adorable. She is absolutely beautiful. What we call her. Dunno, what about Smudge? You a Smudge? I think she agrees. I think she might. So it looks like a little smudge, as she's now called, has landed on her feet with those two. And hopefully they'll be able to take her home if the original owner doesn't come forward. Let me get the coupon. Come on, spin. Spin. 
In Epsom, Surrey, Scott's patient Cookie and her owner Millie are doing what they love most. She means everything to me, really, because I've had her since she was eight weeks old, and I've just been with her for like 24 7. She's always with me, she's always making me smile when I'm not down. She's just always there for me, and she's always happy. I love her very much. What's this? I've never known a bond like Millie's and Cookies. Um, they just, they're just together all the time. They're just peas in a pod, perfect together. But the little Shih Tzu cross has recently developed a worrying problem. Cookie's breathing's very noisy. When she exerts herself or she gets nervous or worried, she gets, you know, her breathing's laboured. It's like someone just pressing down on your chest all the time or something just being in your throat and like stopping you from breathing. And I feel quite sorry for her because like, she can't really run around the park as much as she'd want to because she gets out of breath quite easily. Diane and Millie suspect there is an issue with Cookie's soft palate, but they won't know for sure till they see Scott tomorrow. Hopefully something can be done about it to ease her breathing, especially as she gets older. At the end of a tough day, Scott's at home in Surrey, working on a special project, a chicken coop. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to having chickens in my house. It's not something that the average Londoner can do, but now we've moved out a little bit further, I've got the space, the kids are gonna love it, and these chickens just desperately need a new start in life. Scott's getting some rescue chickens, but first he needs to finish the hen house. Try and get your way through that, Mr. Fox. Last year, Scott met a team of volunteers who rehome chickens. Hello, girls. When the birds are no longer producing enough eggs, some of the luckier ones are given away by commercial farms and are then known as rescue hens. After careful health checks, they're then available to be rehomed. When you think that these poor birds live their whole life in a tiny cage with wire at the bottom, they don't have natural light, it's just an awful existence for them. So I'm happy to get dirty, get stuck in, build them the coop of their dreams. Whoop, whoop. Hey, no. This really is no one-person job. There's a nurse when you need them. Mate, you got some screws? Oh, good boy. Good helping. That's it. Do you want to help Daddy put one in? Yes. Oh, it's looking pretty good. JJ, what do you think? Hi, Scott. Hi, Jackson. Hey, Ali, how are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? Looking yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Scott's been also been, been spurred on by his yeah, long-time friend and so neighbour, Ali. What do you think, Jackson? It's looking good. Yes. I've known I wanted to get chickens for a long time. I mentioned that to Scott, and he said, oh, you're getting chickens, I want to get chickens too. So we've decided to go and get chickens together. <laughs> Ali has Eating already up. set up yeah. her chicken coop <laughs> and has come over to give the Miller boys a helping hand. Drew. <laughs> I think an extra pair of hands is always useful, but a three-year-old with a power tool is not always that helpful. You know, as much fun as it is building with a toddler, yeah, um, yeah, I, can imagine. I could do with some adult supervision. <laughs> I don't like blowing my own trumpet, but yes, I've built enough flat pack in my time to know that I can follow those instructions, unlike Scott. <laughs> I'm a bloke, I don't need instructions. Ali and I are good mates, and we forged our relationship over a long time. It's so much easier doing it with another adult. But she's also a strong-willed lady who knows her own mind. <laughs> OK. So that has to do that. OK. Good. Good. Solid. Happy. Feels pretty solid, yeah. It's, yeah. The proof is in the roof, I guess. I think our little girls are going to be all snuggled up in there. What are you doing? Hi, baby. Hey. This is our new chicken coop. With the chicken here, coop nearing What's completion, uh, all that's whoa. needed are the new residents. Why? We're getting quite exciting. It's only a few days away, so yeah, the girls are coming. Yes. Can you live with that? Done. Cool. Hooray! Yes. Girls, high five! Oh wow, <laughs> it's so nice, isn't it?
Diane and her daughter Millie have arrived at Scott's Richmond practice with their noisy companion, Cookie. Hi there. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. This, this is Cookie. cookie. Yes. Oh, oh, hello. She's absolutely beautiful, isn't mm -hmm. she? I'm hoping that Scott will be able to help her breathe and um, hopefully from then on, you know, she won't have a problem. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, Hi I'm Scott. How are you? Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Hello. Millie. Hello, Millie. Well, who's this? Cookie. Hello, Cookie. You're looking very comfortable in there. <laughs> that's a very funny noise. Let's hope that's just you snoring. Is it? <laughs> All right. Do you want to come in the consult room? Come on. She means the world to me, so I'm a bit nervous. So why is she here today? You can hear she has trouble uh, breathing. She's got this noise at the back of her throat, which we think is a soft palate. That is an incredible noise. So the first thing I can see is she has virtually no nostrils, very tightly positioned nostrils like that. So that's why she probably has to open her mouth to breathe. Just have a little listen to your lungs. Well, I can still hear the noise but it sounds far away, which means that the problem isn't emanating from the chest, it's further up as you guessed. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that um, you are bang on in your diagnosis. I do think it's almost certain to be a soft palate issue. So basically that's the structure that separates your nasal passages from your oral cavity in your mouth. And it's like a big thick tongue that sort of flaps in the back. And in some dogs that have shorter noses, like little Cookie here, it's all shunted into the back. And then that flaps over her larynx and then every single breath she takes in, comes in and it goes <laughs> like that over the larynx and it's sort of flapping like a curtain in an open window. And that's the noise that we can hear. Dogs with this particular syndrome, which is called BOAS, which is brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, can be under real duress when it comes to exercise or when it's hot and they're running out and about, say in the park, and they can literally suffocate. So what we need to do is to perform surgery ASAP. Cookie could really be in a lot of danger, so we do need to address this problem now. Your little princess is gonna need two little bits of surgery today, all right? Um, first off, we need to make her nostrils bigger, and then we need to shorten that curtain all right, it's flapping over her, in her airways. All right. It's really scary because she hasn't really been under anaesthetic that much, and you don't really know. You okay? You're a bit worried, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> All the animals that come in to the practice are loved, but you can really tell there's a very close bond between Cookie and Millie. So I'm definitely not going to let it down today. Thank you. All right. Say goodbye. We'll see you later. Say bye. We'll and hopefully, when you see her again, she'll be making less noise. Say bye. Say bye. She's very special. It's sort of um, unimaginable, isn't it, to, to be without her? So. Yeah, it is, it is worrying. Hey, you sound like me when I'm asleep. Hmm? In Isleworth, it's now been seven days since John found the lost kitten. Go on then, in you go. And he's back today with wife Katie and daughter Parker. Hello. Hi. Hi. I do believe she's yours. Finally. Do you want me to go get her for you? Yes, please. Are you excited? Very. Okay. Go get her. I'm very, 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 very excited. <laughs> How are you? It's been seven days and no one's come forward to claim her, so it looks like Smudge is definitely Katie and John's. They look so excited. Here she is. Hi, hey, now. And I think little Parker could hardly contain herself. <laughs> Look, it's your new kitty. Finally. Finally we get to take her home. Been worried all week that someone was going to come in and ring and say that she wasn't ours, but now she is. Very exciting. She's so cute. I'm going to kiss her. 
Can you kiss that nose? Yeah. I think Parker and Smudge are going to get on very well. I think we're going to have friends for life. She's very, very excited to get this cat home and give it lots of cuddles and play with it and introduce it to the dog and the cat. Mm. Are you happy now? Yeah. It's great to know she's going to a loving home. She'll be a welcome addition. Bless her. Wow. It's going to be a shame for us not having Smudge here. She's kind of settled in brilliantly over the last seven days and it's going to be odd coming to work and not seeing her. But having her in a family environment is what's best for her and it just wouldn't be fair to keep her here, just for us. Say bye to Lily. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Shall we take her home then? Come on, then. That's right, sweetheart. Good girl. OK, one more. So nearly done, sweetheart. Good girl. In Richmond, Scott is hoping surgery will help give Cookie a better quality of life. Nurse Nathan will be assisting. Hey. <laughs> yes. Cookie has small nostrils, as well as an elongated soft palate that is obstructing her airway and causing her constant snorting. Brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome is the problem, and the solution is not only increasing the size of her nostrils, but also reducing the size of her soft palate, which will reduce the noise and hopefully make Cookie breathe easier. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Going good. How are you doing? To perform the surgery, Scott will so also need the help of new vet yeah. Phoebe. What I'm going to do, Phoebe, is just going to place some stay sutures that yeah. you're going to hold behind my head so mm. we can both see what we're doing. With that hand, if you hold on there, there we go. OK, good. As well as a new vet, Scott's also using a new piece of technology for today's surgery. So what benefit does this new bit of kit give you? Well, it's incredible, really, in that it cuts using radio waves, high-frequency radio waves. Today I'm very excited about our new toy, which is radio surgery. It basically uses high-frequency radio waves to cut through tissue. It also clots the blood as you cut it, and then you're able to remove the tissue altogether. So it's a very clever bit of technology, and it basically flies through a probe that I hold in my hand, just like a water scalpel. So it's quite a meaty one for a little dog. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, well, I mean, I think my kit worked really well, although the mm. smell... It's not great, <laughs> is it? it uh, it's not barbecue mm -hmm. fare, is it? <laughs> but that's actually cut that beautifully. Can you see that? Mm. It's good. It's not bleeding at all. You're right back there, Phoebe. Yeah, I'm all right. Just leaning on you for support as usual, whilst also being a massive weight on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's let those stay sutures go now, Phoebe, mm -hmm. and see. That's it. Good. Look at that. Right. Staying there. Beautiful. After trimming the soft palate, both Phoebe and I can see very clearly down the back of the throat that that soft palate is no longer going to be the cause of that reverberation, that noise, which is great. It's really good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Life-changing. <laughs> Hopefully it will be, yeah. Mm. All right, let's move on to the nose then, shall we? Mm. The next procedure I need to perform is basically a nose job on Cookie to increase the size of her nostrils, and that's called an alar plasty. So what I do is take a little wedge of tissue from each of the nostrils and then flare them open, increasing the nostrils, increasing the amount of air that she can breathe and reducing the noise she makes. OK, it's amazing. And the lack of bleeding is, uh, is really quite awesome. OK, so let's switch to that one. Look at that instant nostril. OK. Yep. OK. Oh, that's so much better. All right, let's wake her up and see if she uh, has stopped making that awful noise. Hey, let's say it's the, that's the moment of truth. All right, sweetheart. Good girl. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh hello. Listen to that. Mm. Happy with that. Eh? Yeah. 
looks good, sounds good. Yeah. The proof really will be in the pudding when it comes to Cookie recovering from her anaesthetic because the tube's been down her throat. So we know there's a bit of throat clearing, there's maybe a little bit of fluid in her nose as well, and a bit of irritation to her windpipe because of the tube. All of that adds up to being far less than the noise she made before we started. So it's a great result. Once Cookie fully recovers from the anaesthetic, Diane and Millie will be back to collect her later this afternoon. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Listen to you, hey? Oh, what a lovely, quiet girl you are. In Richmond, little Cookie has recovered from her soft palate surgery. Come on, then. And has been given the all clear to go home. That's it. Oh, here's your bag. In you go. Good girl. It means home, doesn't it? Good girl. Scott used a special new cutting tool for Cookie's surgery and vet Phoebe has wasted no time getting in some practice. Hello. What are you up to? <laughs> Just practicing. Wow, what's your patient's name? Porky. Porky. <laughs> wow, you're doing a very nice job on Porky. Well, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? You do. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> she pleased to see you. Aren't I she? can't wait. I know. Were you worried today? Yeah. Yeah, so was I. The day went by so slow. I know. Upstairs, Cookie's owners Diane and Millie are eager to collect their little girl. It was a pretty horrid day. I had to sort of, um, you know, keep myself occupied and, uh, yeah, try not to worry and be positive. And I'm a bit um, apprehensive to see her and find out how she's coped with it and, um, you know, just see how she looks and how she's acting. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Here she oh, is. hello, baby. Oh, look, you've got purple stitches. She's got a new looking nostrils. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Let's just have a listen. What do we hear? Silence. The sound of silence. <laughs> Massive difference, eh? So the first thing that we did is had a look in the back of her throat and just as I suspected, that curtain was right in front of the open window and just sort of being sucked back and that sort of vibration was making all that noise that we could hear. So that got trimmed. Mm. Then the second thing is, of course, you can see she's got slightly different shaped nostrils now. By just giving that increased aperture, you can see that she is just making far less noise. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. You're happy to have her back? Yeah, we couldn't wait, could we? Couldn't wait to get her back. The recovery is incredible. You can't hear her heavy breathing anymore. She's come through okay. Yeah, she looks great. Just a bit of TLC now and she'll be fine. It's going to be really quiet. I won't have to put headphones in to block out her snoring anymore. All right then. Mm. Oh, my beautiful. What a sweetheart you are. Back to mummy. Here you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Handing Cookie back to Millie was a wonderful moment because you could really see that she was just so happy to have her little companion back. And for me as a vet, it's really rewarding because I know I've done my job to ensure that Cookie is going to breathe beautifully and healthily a long way into the future. Bye. Bye. Go get the girls. It's the weekend, and Scott and his neighbour Ali are picking up their rescue hands. Hi there, you must be Fran. Hi, how I'm you Fran. Doing? Nice to meet you, I'm Scott. Scott. Yeah, and this is Ali. Hi, Fran. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. How are you doing? We're, we're, we're yeah, very excited. excited. We are. <laughs> we're, we're not. We're excited. If you want to follow me? I'll lead you the way. Excellent. This is one of the collection points for the British Hen Welfare Trust, where the public can come to get hens for rehoming after the birds are no longer productive enough at commercial farms. Oh, bless you. Hello. Hello. OK, should we start grabbing them out? Yeah? But first, all the birds have to have health checks. There will be 150 chickens here, sort of all needing to have a once-over, have their claws clipped, etc. So it'll be great that Scott and Ali can, can help us do that. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl, go that way. There we go. Good girls. Are you right? Yeah. Off we go, girls. Come here, sweetie. There we go. 
Birds that have been in a caged hen environment have feather loss. They've also got very floppy combs. And some of them are quite lean, which maybe means that they were just a little bit more picked on than some of the others. So they were at the end of the food queue. Right, let's have a little look at you. So first thing I noticed there, she's got this very pale comb flopping down like that. That's really common, yeah. But that will shrink and it will go bright red once she's sort of cooled down a bit. Yeah. Just because it's so hot in the cages. Bit of sunlight. Exactly, good yeah. Good diet. do her good, yeah, yeah. Definitely. She'll be right as rain. OK. Let's have a little look at this girl here. Whoa, OK, OK. Let's have a look at your nails. So, yeah, they're quite long, they're aren't they? Very pale legs. These birds shoved into spaces that are too small with no natural light. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> Their feet are on wire their entire lives. They're dumped at 72 weeks because they're not laying as much as they need to lay. You know, they're just effectively a living machine. That doesn't sit comfortably with me. <laughs> Ellie, do you love this one? I think this one's your first chicken. Bless her. Hey. <laughs> Ellie's definitely got her eye on this one. It's because uh, Ellie's had her first chicken cuddle and she's smitten. Hello, sweetheart. I just want to give him a good home, really. Yeah. Okay, so she can go down. Once we've examined all the birds and they all seem to be in pretty good nick, Ali and I get to choose chickens, which is very exciting indeed. <laughs> it's like my rocky moment. I've got you, I've got you. You're definitely coming home with me after that. This one's very talkative. I think she'll suit my household very well. Oh, it's three. Three more. So these girls don't really know how lucky they are. As soon as they get home, they'll be sunbathing for the first time, standing on grass for the first time, laying their first freedom egg, which is amazing. So they've got just a whole free range retirement ahead of them and they're going to be really, really happy. Hello. You're home. Scott is dropping off Ali and her hens first. I'm hoping they'll settle in pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, sweetie. Say hi to mummy. Hello, me. I want them to have a very different life. I want them to have fresh air and sunlight and freedom and the best food you can give them. All the stuff they're going to love. Welcome to your new home. Some more females into the ranks of the Miller household. You come to welcome the girls. Come on then. And now, Scott can introduce his new arrivals to their brand new home. Come on. Okay. I'm really chuffed at the whole process, actually, and to finally have the girls here and to know that they're safe and happy and well, it's, it's such a wonderful feeling. Look, sunshine and a tree. I know there's fairy things down there are dogs. And you're going to meet a few more people soon. Hey, Go on, then. In you go. You guys have a nice little rest. A few more important people for you to meet. Yeah? Look. Who do you think's going to be in here, JJ? Look. Yes. Do you want to meet them? Look. The new arrivals Look. are settling in well, and Scott That's is excited it. to introduce them to the family. Cute. They are very cute, aren't they, mate? Oh, they very cute. cute. I've already called that one. That one's Eggy, that one there. Eggy. That's Eggy okay. there. Okay. Yep. Did and then the dark one there, that? that's Chuck Norris there. Chucky, Daddy, look. Oh, wow, well, one's gone oh. out. Yay, that's Hey Hey. It's always special to rescue animals, but to know that they wouldn't have been alive if it wasn't for us taking them to our new homes is just such a wonderful feeling. Hi, Pasta. That's Pasta. Hi, Pasta boy. It's a girl. Oh, okay. Hi, Pasta girl. Yeah. <laughs> they need to be girls to lay eggs. No. If they were boys, they'd wake you up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's true. <laughs> like you <That's> do. <laughs> <laughs> just introduced the chickens to the kids and they think they're wonderful and they're so excited for them to be here. It's just such a lovely additive to the family and also the end of the journey to have the girls here and to have them comfortable and happy and they're already eating and pecking around. It's a really good result, so I'm ecstatic. <laughs> and three weeks later, Scott is checking up on Little Cookie. Hello. Hello! How's it going? Fine, how are you? Good. Hello, beautiful. I've been looking forward to seeing you. Come on in. Thank you very much. The Shih Tzu Cross had nose and soft palate surgery to fix her constant snoring and breathing difficulties. Well, first things first, let me see this beautiful face. And she has 
nostrils. Look at those. Big difference, yes, eh? Yes, huge difference. I'd say she's about 80 or 90 percent quieter. Wow. Straight away, you can hear that she sounds better, she's far quieter, which means that Millie gets a good night's sleep. Less noise, more energy, huge yeah. difference, yeah. Gosh, that is incredible, isn't it? She's a different dog. She just enjoys her walk so much more. And she sniffs, she stops and sniffs, which she never did before, really. Really? Yeah. She's I found mean, a sense of smell. Yeah, it's really different. Which is just awesome. It's yeah. the icing on the cake, isn't it? Ooh. Look who's in today. I know. <laughs> Our Carol. Our Carol. Soon to be Phoebe's Carol. Is there something I should know about Carol? At the Eyes and Life practice. Hello, love. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm OK. How are you? Scott, oh, I'm good. Who have you got Phoebe, for us today? The receptionist Hi. Gina Hi, are about to begin Hello. a challenging right. day yeah. with one of the <laughs> clinic regulars. All right, let's have a look, eh? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello, Willow. And then we got Shimmy. Hey. And Harry's in the back. OK, well, I'll take Harry because I need the muscles. You girls get those too. I always love it when Carol comes to town. When she comes into the practice, she always has multiple cats. Carol, who's been eating the pies? I Harry wonder, has. I wonder. I told you it was heavy. <laughs> They're all crazy. They're all strong-willed. They're all very feisty. Very much like the lovely Carol herself. Right. Um, no cigar for working out what his problem might be. Yeah. <laughs> the first patient is Harry. Yeah. Harry is definitely the biggest cat I've ever seen in my entire life. I was a bit worried that he was going to break the scales at one point. What I'd probably say, Carol, is that whenever a cat is sort of covering the whole way scale, that, that might be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he is quite overweight. Yeah. So I think the big thing with him is put all the other cat's food up so you know what he's eating because yes, it's the true. only food that's on the ground. I never thought of that. That's a good idea. Yeah, OK. And what it might do is encourage him to lose weight and be more athletic because then he'll be able to jump up eventually and get the food. If he's food motivated, yes. hopefully the motivation will lead to yeah. weight loss because he'll just be a bit more energetic. With Harry, he lives in a multi-cat household. It's really hard to control the portion sizes of each cat. Harry is just sitting beside the bowl and absorbing everything that's left. And as a result, his waistline is getting bigger and bigger, he's getting more lazy and therefore putting on more weight. All right, so a diet for you, my friend. Mm. Next cab off the rank is Shimmy. Now she come. There you go. Unfortunately for Shimmy, she's got quite a long coat and every year she suffers in the heat, she sweats and then produces mats. And because of her feisty nature, she won't let Carol groom her. <laughs> Maybe what we'll try and do is just see if she'll let us just hold her and clip it off. What do you think? <laughs> it's entirely up to you. If you want to dice with death, feel free. But I'm going to stand right over there, right out of the way. I'll tell you now. <laughs> Shimmy's skin is suffering as a result of this matted coat. So as a result, we need to clip it all away. But to do that, we need to give Shimmy just a whiff of gas. She'll be asleep just momentarily whilst that hair is trimmed away. So we're going to keep her. And last but not least, Willow. And then Willow hey, coming out. The cat that comes out of the last box is Willow, who is my my personal favourite. She is so adorable. She's a really, really sweet cat. It's a little alien cat. Hey. Carol and I have known for quite a while now that Willow is suffering with a viral condition called Khaleesi virus, which is one of the cat flu viruses, and it leads to a cat having really severe and ongoing gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums. So with Willow. Unfortunately, it's not something that she will ever be able to get rid of. Okay. What we need to do, as horrible as it sounds, is to actually remove every single one of her teeth. Will she be able to eat properly without her teeth? She'll be just fine. Bone underneath will Excellent. still be there. She'll be having gums that are nice and healthy now and she'll be able to eat no problems. Willow's teeth are really, really painful and I'm definitely with Scott that the best thing to do is just get them all out now. It's safer for her, it means that she won't have to undergo multiple anaesthetics in her life and it will just make her a lot more comfortable. Good girl. I'm pretty concerned about Willow. She's so tiny and to have an anaesthetic when she's so tiny, it's very precious. She's the one I keep an eye on most. Good for me. Good for me.
of rowers along the river. In Richmond, Claire's morning walk with her daughters and the family's two Boston Terriers isn't as pacey as usual. Come on, look, walking's fun. Recently, four-year-old Morticia has been struggling to keep up with big brother Gomez. Good doggies. Both dogs are very active and walk about six miles a day. Gomez, come here. But I think there's a problem with Morticia because she's been walking in a slightly ungainly fashion, which is really quite worrying. Oh, she looks tired. And Frankie, in particular, is struggling with the idea that Morticia could have a serious problem. Our bond is so unique because they came into my life when I really needed cheering up. Five years ago, Frankie suffered a brain hemorrhage, and Gomez and Morticia were brought especially to help her rehabilitate. While she's in her coma, which is for a month, I said to Maxine, her sister, um, do you think it would be a good idea if we got doggies? So I found a breeder and I ordered two Bostons. She loved them. In the early days, walking was challenging for me and walking was also challenging for them, so we were kind of in the same position. And so we both walked quite slowly. And then as they progressed to walk faster and start running and stuff, it sort of made me want to walk faster and sort of progress my walking as well. So I think they, they pushed me to, um, to get better faster. Little tissue woo kids. With Frankie's health ordeal behind her, it's now Morticia who needs help. She's booked in to see Scott later today. Oh, good girl. Right, should we get an IV in her then and get cracking? I think so. All right, you hold our little lady for us, that's it. At the Isleworth practice, Scott and new vet Phoebe are preparing Devon Rex Willow for surgery. Scott has no choice but to remove all the two-year-old cat's teeth. Oh, baby. Willow's got really bad gums, classic of gingivitis as a result of being a calicivirus carrier. With Willow, that will never get better. And what we want to do is to try and avoid pain long term. And the way we're going to have to do that is by removing all of her teeth. So it seems like she's fairly stable on this anaesthetic. Mm. Her breath is pretty pungent, my love. Mm -hmm. OK, so I'll start by removing the teeth on this side and you can have a go on the other side. OK. Next door, Willow's housemate Shimmy is also being anaesthetised by vet Tina and nurse Gina not for surgery, but for a much needed haircut. We're gonna do a line cut today. So short back and sides, fluffy tail and fluffy face. The feisty feline refuses to be groomed. So her thick coat has become matted and knotted. Meanwhile, Scott has removed the first set of teeth from Willow's jaw. So that's that side completely clear. My turn, thank you. Now it's new vet Phoebe's turn to attempt the challenging procedure. When I finally give over the reins to Phoebe, she is a face of concentration. She's working really hard, putting that pressure on to get those teeth out. And soon she realises that even though a dental seems like something quite easy to do, it's actually quite tricky. It's just about being very methodical and gradually keep going around, breaking down more and more tissue, mm. gently but purposefully. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah. At the beginning, I bit off a bit more than I could chew, I think, and I tried to tackle a really big tooth, which didn't really go to plan. I've never had to extract what are basically healthy teeth before. It's a whole different ball game. It is. Oh, I don't know how you do it. It's still so firmly in there. I don't know how you do it. It's still so firmly in there. At the Isleworth practice, new vet Phoebe is struggling to remove the teeth from two-year-old Willow. I'm breaking a sweat. I think the tooth's winning at this point. <laughs> Fortunately, I think it is. This type of dental procedure really can be quite fraught because you do have to give a lot of pressure to remove some of these relatively healthy teeth and one slip in the wrong direction, you can harpoon their nasal passages, you can even lobotomise a cat or break their jaw. I think I must not be getting the angle right. Just lots of patience. Just got to go slowly. 
Simon, just sort of try and wiggle into the pocket. Give it a little wiggle. There you go. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Possibly the smallest one in the cat's mouth. But it, doesn't, hey. it doesn't matter, it's still a two. That's right. <laughs> it's really a special time working with Phoebe in this early part of her career because everything's a first, so everything is brand new and really special. There we go. Hey. And so, of course, doing a dental like this, it looks easy maybe when someone more experienced is doing it. When Phoebe takes the reins, she can see it's actually quite tough. Hey! There we go. There you go. All done. That's your first complete dental extraction done. First time I've removed all the teeth in a cat. <laughs> yeah. Not particularly oh. elegant procedure, but uh, one that was sorely needed. And good practice as well. Yeah. <laughs> she looks good. Next door, Willow's housemate is getting the finishing touches to her new haircut. I think it looks pretty good. She's looking much better. She is. You could make another cat yeah. out of that, couldn't you? It's one of those no pain, no gain scenarios. Mm -hmm. Pain the short term for a long term gain. Two hours later. Here's your girls. Oh my word. Carol has arrived at the clinic to collect her precious cats. She's still a little bit sleepy. Mm. She doesn't have any teeth. I'm not kissing you. Unlike this one. Here's the unveiling. You ready? Go on then. <laughs> oh, look at you. I know. Fancy, huh? Got rid of all those knots. Shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Go away, she says. I'm not coming to you. Let's hope her demeanour lasts now that she's been clipped. Shimmy looks really nice. Won't last long, but she does look nice at the moment. <laughs> and she's happier, hopefully. We'll find out when we get home. Hello. She's such a brave little thing. And I'm just going to quickly show you her okay. new mouth, OK? Willow will be much oh, more comfortable now that she's had all her teeth removed. All right, so a little bit of blood in there, which is completely fair enough, but that'll come right in a few days' time. But she's been a very brave girl. She's been a good girl. Yeah. Doesn't matter if she's got teeth or not. Willow is Willow and that's it. Part of the family. Yeah, you're great. So shall we help you to the car? Give you a bit of peace. All yes, right. Please. Thank you. Come uh -huh. on then. Okay. Come on, you two. All right. At the Richmond Clinic, it's an exciting morning for Scott and the team. They're getting ready to welcome back an important member of the practice. We first met Ryan as one of our clients when we first started these practices. A very warm, friendly guy, absolutely loves his animals. And then after a while, we offered him a job. He took it, he came on as one of our receptionists and then worked so hard as a mature student to get into university. And now he's studying as a vet. We could be proud of him. Here's the boy. Hello. Hi, Hello, Scott. mate. How are you? How are you? Good. Today, Good. Ryan's returning to undertake oh, work placement as part yeah. of his veterinary degree. Very good. How's the university treating you? Fine, yeah, really yeah. well. Really good, thank you. Yeah. Oh, we're so proud oh, of you. Bless you. It's amazing, isn't it? It means a lot to be back here. Uh, Scott and the team have done so much for me. I'm so happy to be a part of the team again. You ready for a few challenges? Yeah, yeah. Put me through my paces. Go and put the uniform on like Superman mm -hmm. and get stuck in. Get stuck in? Yeah. All right. All right, mate. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> He's gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> Good doggies. Boy. And Ryan's yep. first patient is not far away. Yep. Claire has arrived with her two Boston Terriers, Gomez and Morticia. She's worried four year old Morticia may have a problem with her left knee and she's hoping to get some answers. Hello, Claire. Hi. Hello, Morticia. Hello, Gomez. How are you? This is Ryan. Hello, hi. Hello. That's Morticia, who's our patient. I've seen Morticia quite a lot over the last few years, and two years ago, she had an issue with her knee. She had a diagnosis of a dislocating or luxating patella, basically where the kneecap pops out of the groove that it sits in. Claire and I made the decision to go ahead with surgery, we got a great result, and two years later, unfortunately, the other leg is starting to show similar signs. So, Ryan, you might feel a little set up right now, but Claire and I 
know what the issues are with this dog. Okay. And you are on a journey of discovery, my friend. Right, okay. All right. Come on then. Come on, Tishy. Come on. In the early stages of your veterinary career, it's a lot of theory. So I think it's the perfect opportunity to put him through his paces as a trainee vet to see what the examination is like, what that shows up, and then what Ryan's diagnosis is. So tell me, what's been going on? Uh, well, Tisha has a little problem when she runs. She okay. skips a little bit. Right, it looks okay. quite cute, but it's not a normal no. run. No. I guess importantly, which leg have you noticed this on? <laughs> oh, we're giving away so much. I don't know if we should say. I already knew. Oh, sure. Yeah. With your X-ray vision. I, I was... It's amazing what they teach them at uni these days. Unbelievable. Okay, well, I think it's probably about time. All those questions are lovely, but I think you probably want to put your hands on I the do, dog. I do, yes. Yeah. Come on, little oh, tissue. Oh, sweetie, I've got to get a bit closer, I'm afraid. Hey. During the examination of Morticia, you can see that Ryan's a little bit nervous. He's a little bit tentative. He doesn't want to injure his patient because he is inexperienced, and that's all fair enough. But he is being methodical. He checks each one of the legs and the joints of each leg as well before coming to his diagnosis. So it would appear that that's slipping out of place. Yeah. Um, so Morticia has a luxating patella. So. Exactly, yes. Little girl. Morticia's problem is that she has something called a medially dislocating patella. So basically her kneecap pops out of the groove that it's supposed to sit in and moves towards the centre of her body. By doing so, it stretches the patella ligament, it's uncomfortable and it means that the dog skips when she's at the park. Unfortunately, we need to go for surgery because mm -hmm. that constant rubbing, 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 yeah. rubbing all day, every day, mm -hmm. you will see arthritic development and okay. that will then impede her lifelong ability to enjoy the park, which I know she really does. She does. She loves so it. So we need to ensure her future by doing surgery okay. in the present. Okay. Oh, little tissue, poor doggy. I don't really like the thought of an operation and anaesthetic. Not good for her to have to be operated on, but at least it will save her from pain later in life. So, little lady, you're going to stay with me and Uncle Ryan and correct this dislocating kneecap once and for all. Okay, all right, say goodbye to your brother. Look, he's Let's quivering go. and he's not even getting surgery done. Come on, Gomez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, see you later. Bye. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Come on then. Come on, get your dinner. Come on. In Isleworth, oh, one of Scott's regular patients has an all-too-familiar problem. Good boy. Dylan is a four-and-a-half-year-old English Bull Terrier who adores his food, and owner Jane admits she finds it hard to say no. I think by giving them extra treats, I think, yes, you do. You feel that you... because you love them and you want them to love you back, so you do tend to give them little extras, which we shouldn't. One more. Good boy. He's sitting there looking at you, thinking, yeah, go give me some mum. <laughs> but yes, I think it is a love thing. I think because you do love your animals and you want to feed them. Piling on the pounds can cause serious medical issues, as Jane knows all too well. Being overweight, I've had some very bad times with my back, my neck, my shoulders, um, my breathing. You know, even just going up and down the stairs, I'm out of breath. And obviously that is not what I want for Dylan. Jane has her weight issues under control, and now it's Dylan's turn to count the calories. I think it is very important that Dylan needs to be checked uh, for his weight. Dylan is booked in to see Scott, and Jane's hoping he'll help her dish up some tough love. All gone. All gone. Hi, Reagan. Hi. Ryan's going to tell you what problem Morticia has. So Morticia so has a luxating patella. Oh, no. Yeah. Which means it's... Her left. left. Her left, OK. At the Richmond practice, Scott and trainee vet Ryan are preparing Morticia for her knee operation. All that rubbing long-term leads to arthritis, and there's nothing that your vet can do about it. No. So that's why it's better to prevent the issue or nip it in the bud. Vet nurses Reagan and Sam will be assisting. Good girl, well done. So what we need to do is to give her an anaesthetic. 
we'll get on with the surgery. All right. You're a good girl, aren't you? The condition of medially dislocating patella is something that we do see quite commonly here at the practice, where bow-legged dogs are having their knees pop out of the joint. So out it pops like that, see? Put your finger there, you can feel the groove. And then just beside oh, it, yeah. you can okay. feel the kneecap. You can, yes. Okay, now push it back. Wow. Feel yeah. gross? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we're going to fix. Okay. All right. Flush a bit of oxygen into there. This will be Ryan's first chance to scrub in for a surgery. Scott will be mentoring him every step of the way. Ready? Okay, let's, let's go, go for your first surgical experience. I'd always wanted to be a vet. It's great to be able to come back as a vet student and um, prove myself, really. I know that Scott's going to really push me, and that's great for me. All right, so Sam, you happy? I'm happy. Yeah, all good. good. Ryan, you happy? I'm ready. Fine. Yeah. Let's go. He looks nervous. <laughs> Yes, I'm just going to cut now. OK, Ryan, so what you can see there is that trochlear groove where the knee should sit, OK? And okay. what's the first thing you can see looking at that? Well, there's a distinct lack of the groove. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much flat, yeah. exactly. So what we need to do is definitely deepen that to allow the knee cap to sit yeah. in that groove. So this is the saw that we're going to use to cut a little hole into this trochlear groove. To deepen that groove, OK. Yeah. Just support this. Yeah. Be nice and still, and possibly watch your own fingers. All right. Okay. Now this is the all important bit. How are you feeling doing this? Yeah, fine. It's... Yeah. It's not making you feel nauseous or weird. Not in the slightest. Here we go. Okay. There There's a lovely wedge. That's our little friend that we'll keep sure, for later. Safe. So now, what we need to do is deepen that, about two millimetres, which doesn't sound like lots, but for a little dog, that is going to be quite a bit. So now, I'm just going to replace a bit of cartilage from before. OK. Back in. So that looks pretty good. So we can place the knee back into back that in position. Place. There we go. We can see that's now sitting there, back where it should be. OK. All right, so let's close her up. I'm really happy with the surgical result with Morticia. She should be walking around perfectly after about six weeks or so. So it's very rewarding indeed. And that, my friend, is your first knee operation in a dog. We are done. Well, well done. done. It's been really great working with Ryan today. It's great to be part of this process of discovery as he learns to be a vet and hopefully to inspire him to continue to forge forward and to try things that he maybe wouldn't feel comfortable with before. Come on then, my beauty. Here we go. Oh, let's get you in a snuggly bed. Morticia will spend the afternoon sleeping off her sedation and hopefully go home with owner Claire tomorrow. Good girl. You're such a brave little thing, aren't you, eh? At the Isleworth practice... Good boy, come on. Jane is on. bringing in Dylan, Here her rather chubby English yeah. bull terrier and his housemate Delilah. Hi, Jane. Hello. How are you? Dylan and Delilah. Hello, Dylan. Hello, mate. How are you? Hello, big boy. Jane, are we thinking that um, your Dylan's uh, a little bit more of a handful than he normally is? Uh, yes, he's a little bit. A little bit over. You can't say no to that face, though, can you? I absolutely love when Dylan comes into the practice, and I absolutely love English Bull Terriers. Just maybe not so much of this particular one. Now, Jane, you know I had an English Bull Terrier, white English Bull Terrier, yes. exactly like yours. Yep. So I have a good sense of how heavy they should be. Should be. So let's find out how heavy okay. your boy actually is. Come, Come on, on then, then, big boy. Dylan. Up on there. A healthy weight for a male English Bull Sit. Terrier Sit. Dylan size should be Stay. around 30 to 35 Stay. kilos. Stay. When I get him on there, He's over 39 kilograms. It shows that he is clearly overweight and this is a problem that we need to address. Come on, big boy. Let's go. Come on, Jane. You've got to hear this as well. Come on. Being overweight is a serious issue. In the UK alone, about a third of dogs are thought to be either overweight or obese, and that can considerably reduce their lifespan. 
How much is he eating at home? He just has um, a tub of yogurt for breakfast. Uh, right. Only a small, a small tub. Right. Of an evening, it's just his main biscuit meal. And then, being that he is such a lovable, friendly, cuddly chap, does he kind of convince you that he should be getting more than that? Yes, he's very... Um, he Persuasive. Would oh, very much so, yeah. Well, I mean, just looking at him physically, he is more like a brick than an hourglass. One thing you should be able to do with is feel their ribs, and you can barely feel his, and that means he's just got a little bit too much padding. A little bit too much fat. A little bit chubby than you should be, hey, mate? Uh, but, yeah, you know, obesity can be really dangerous for dogs. Yeah. They can get heart disease, they can have respiratory problems, they can have major joint issues, they can even get diabetes, or worst case scenario, even cancer. So this is a serious problem and we need to come up with a solution that's gonna mean that Dylan loses weight. I do love my dogs and I want what's best for them, so I'd like to get some weight off him if possible. So I would definitely cut out Dairy products, 100%, okay. and most dogs are actually lactose yeah. intolerant anyway. He absolutely so. loves cheese, but we yeah. tend not to try I've got to let you answer your own question yeah, on that so one. <laughs> no more cheese. No more cheese, no. What about exercise then? He's not one for playing very right. much. You throw a ball, he'll look at you and say, well, you couch threw potato. it, you go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> The solution to pets being overweight is the same in people. It's because they're either eating too much or exercising too little. Crack out the lycra, you know, headbands and leg warmers and... <laughs> and then we'll have you come in for uh, the grand weigh-in very soon. Okay. Yeah? Let's go and get those leg warmers on. Come on, hey, hey? Where's the lycra? Where is it? Hey, there it is. Here we go. Good boy. This looks super wild, look at this. At Scott's house oh. in Surrey. Nice and gentle puppies. His wife <laughs> Zoe and the kids are enjoying some playtime with one-year-old Scully and the elder lady of the house, Betty. So when Scott and I met, Betty was eight months old and she was very much his little girl. And when I arrived, I was the other woman to Betty and uh, she used to look at me with total and utter disrespect. And if I said anything, she sort of looked at Scott a bit like, uh, it's talking again. So uh, I was definitely the other woman in the relationship. So along comes Scully and she doesn't just enter our lives, she bowls in as this little ball of fluff. <laughs> She's been an amazing addition to the family. It really has worked out better than we could have expected. We're so happy that Scully was born. The children love the dogs as much as we do. And the adorable little face of yours. And now something's got to happen that makes her from a little baby into a proper little girl. And I'm not looking forward to it. It's spay time. Mm, poor baby. Are you into surgery? As a former vet nurse, Zoe is understandably nervous. A dog being spayed, it's the right thing to do. We're not going to breed from her, but it doesn't change the fact that she's got to go through surgery. It's going to be really hard, but it's got to be done. Baby, mummy's little fur baby. Exercise for you today, boy. Jane has brought four-year-old Dylan and his housemate Delilah to the park to meet Scott. Here's a good boy. The aim is to get the overweight dog motivated to move more and hopefully lose some weight. Dylan doesn't really know what's going to hit him. He's going to be put through his paces. He's uh, not a great one for playing with a ball, so I think a little bit of extra exercise will be brilliant. There's Dylan there. Oh, OK. Scott has enlisted Hi, Ryan Jane. to help Jane Hi, with Dylan. overweight Hi, Dylan's exercise program. This is Ryan. Hello there. Uh, he's my vet student, so that's your patient. <laughs> this is the big boy. Uh, yes. <laughs> he's uh, been on his diet, like you said. Oh, Kept him to it. No treats. Good girl. Been very hard. Today, Ryan is going to squire Dylan through his first exercise session. And first of all, we need to understand what motivates this dog. Uh, so with us, we have these uh, low-fat metabolic treats. Um, oh! Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. wow. That's the reason you're in this mess. <laughs> hey? Oh my Can't goodness. All at once. We know food motivates him. We need to see if there's any other treats or toys, anything else that will get this dog off the couch and run around the park. What about this one, buddy? What about this one? Oh! Oh, oh that's a... Yes. All right, well, let's get physical, as Olivia Newton-John said. <laughs> Before my time stop. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> It's very important with Dylan that we start very slowly. He's an overweight and unfit dog, so we can't run a marathon straight away. Come on, come on. Start with short, sharp oh, bouts of exercise, oh, where we get his heart rate up by using things like toys to get him motivated, get him running around, burning off the energy as he goes. Good boy, Dylan. Good boy. Good boy. Dylan. Good boy. Oh, there we go. Oh, good boy. Let's have a look. Oh. So as you can see, his, um, his heart rate's up, so is mine. So all good signs. He's, um, he's definitely getting the exercise that he needs now. Hey, mate, you look like you enjoyed that. I think he's a star pupil for today. So look, exercise and diet, they're the keys. And healthy weight loss for a dog is about 1% to 2% of their body weight. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> so about 400 grams a week would be fine. 1.6 kilograms a month. and. Very soon, he should be able to, uh, well, be beach ready. Oh. <laughs> oh, good girl. How you doing? You all right? Let's just see if you're going to use that leg. Hey. Oh, clever girl. Clever girl. Yeah. The next day, four-year-old Morticia is recovering well from her knee operation. Well done. Not bad for one day post-surgery. Hey, you're already using your foot. Good girl. And that means the little dog can go home with her owner, Claire, and doggy sibling, Gomez. It's all right, baby. You haven't got to stay. We're just collecting your sister. She'll be here in a minute. All right, let's go see Mummy, hey? Send you home. Mm. Yeah, good job. Hello. Oh, my little girl dog. Here's your girl. Hello, baby. Say hello, oh, Mummy. Hello, my little girl. Oh, little girl, look at me. Who's that? Little sister. Get to kiss her. Say hello, you. Oh, baby doggy. Oh, I'm so pleased to have Morticia back. She's only been away for just over a day, but I missed her lots. So I'm really happy with the way the surgery went, and I think the proof is in the pudding and the fact she's already putting her foot down, which is wonderful. Oh, well, at least it's all gone well. It yeah. has, it has. Yeah. You were absolutely right in doing this right now because we've got ahead of the game. We haven't let arthritis set in before we fix the problem, so it's prevention better than cure. Morticia has been such a brave little dog. She's such a great little patient. But more importantly, she's a really important part of Claire and her family's life. So I'm just really glad that I've been able to pass it back to mum in one piece. All right then, sweet pea. Good girl, be a good girl. If it's all right, I'll come and see you very soon once you're Maybe. walking much better. Oh, yeah? my little cherub, come on. <laughs> Let's start all, all right then. Here. So we'll take her home tonight, and I've got her little bed set yeah. out by the foot where I'll sit on the settee and she'll be on the floor next to me. So she'll be on her way to recovery. Good girl, Tishy, good girl. Going home. Come on, puppy. Later that day, Scott's wife Zoe and good the family girl. puppy Scully are Come arriving on, for their appointment. My little baby is going into surgery for her space. It's an anaesthetic and um, it's kind of just sort of dawned on me today, really, what a big deal it is. It's, yeah, it's a tough day. She's not silly, though. She knows. She's like, consult table? That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> Every dog feels the same way. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it's a very serious operation today, and even though Scully is my dog, I still want to perform a full and complete physical exam on her. All good? All good. Yes. Lovely, yeah. She's a perfectly healthy and happy, and may I say, very beautiful puppy. So I know this isn't a question that normally gets asked to the vet, but how are you feeling about today? 
Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. It's weird, isn't it? You know, it's um, it's a strange situation because it's like operating on one of your children. Mm. So, honey, here's a question for you. Do you want to be a part of the surgery, be in the anaesthetic and be in the surgery room? Well, OK, I wasn't expecting you to ask me that. Um... Just before we were married, Zoe and I actually set up a practice in Portugal. And once the babies were born, we came back to the UK and this is where our life has really flourished. So she has experience at being a vet nurse and understands all the pitfalls of anaesthetics and surgery. So I invite her to come into the surgery with me and to hold Scully by her little fairy paw. It's a hard one, isn't it? Because obviously I'm fine in surgery as I have been in the past, you know, when I was nursing for you. Um, then for it to be our little girl. And then also I can't imagine sitting outside waiting. So yes, if that's okay, yeah, I'll come in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Although you can't do that normal wifey thing where you're sort of looking going, mm, you missed a bit. <laughs> you missed a spot. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that, okay? Uh, all right, fine, but you are going to have to clear up after yourself. Don't expect me to do it. <laughs> I've got nurses for that. <laughs> Is that why you are the way you are at home? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> so the old team is back together again. Zoe and me as vet and nurse. We're much better at husband and wife, however. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Fluff Ball. Let's go. Let's go with Nurse Mummy. Hey, Jess, the Millers are here. Hi, Scully. So our little baby is in for her spade today. At the Richmond Clinic, vet nurse Jess will be assisting Scott and Zoe with Scully's operation. Brave Jess facing not only a boss, but also the boss's wife and their dog. I mean, it's bad enough when you have to deal with your boss, but boss's wife, watch yourself. <laughs> brave girl, sweet girl, brave girl. Scott has been a part of Scully's life from the moment she was born. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna rub it really firmly on the chest. Scott delivered her by caesarean section 12 months ago. Ems, how's it going out there? And she was later given to him by the grateful owner. Four, five, six, breathing puppy! Hey, good <laughs> job, well done. Quite nostalgic moments like this where, for Scully, she was born in my hands on the very table that I do for Spay. I mean, Daddy, love you very much. So to have her life in my hands one more time is really special. Okay. Okay. Oh, sleepy. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna clip that lovely puppy tummy of hers, okay? Lovely tummy. We'll just move her through. Yeah, no worries. I'll go grab a scrub top. Yeah. Stay out your way. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Come on, baby. Love you, baby. How do you put into words how you feel in that moment? I'm both a mother of children and a mother to my little puppy as well, and it's time to go into surgery. Okay. Right. Good. Jess, I'm just about to cut. Everyone yeah. happy? Well. <laughs> well, yeah. No. Happy might be an overstatement. Yeah. I've at least done a thousand dog space, I would say, over my 20 year career. But of course, it's very different when you are operating on your own dog. But for Zoe, she's very nervous. And even though she's confident in my abilities, anaesthetics are risky and she knows that. There we go. So that's it. That's the uterus? Yeah. So there you go. And there's the ovary there. Oh, wow. It's so much smaller than, than you imagine. I mean, at moments of that surgery, I did feel a sense of nerves. I'm shaking. Well, I, I can feel myself shaking, but then I'm not shaking, so I think it's just in my mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> I think what today has taught me is that each animal's special, and the thousand and one spay is just as important as the first. And we can close up. Very neat. Oh, aim to please. Got a very uh, exacting client that's uh, going to be looking at this <laughs> with eagle eyes. It's true. Mm. So impressed, though. I think I'll get you to do the kids' name labels on their school uniforms from now on. <laughs> I think we both know that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wake our girl up. Thankfully, this spay went completely without a hitch. There was no complications whatsoever. So it meant that the stress for Zoe and I was over quite quickly and that Scully could wake up. Here we go. Hello. You know, it is extraordinary to think she popped out into life on this very table. It's right mad, here. isn't it? Mm. 
Scully will stay at the clinic for a little longer before going home later today. All done. Let this be the last time you come in to see Daddy at work. <laughs> Okay, you two, time for lunch. Nicely. Good boy. It's been eight weeks since Dylan was put on a diet. His owner, Jane, has now replaced his treats with healthy fresh fruit and vegetables. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on. And today there's time for one last jog in the park before Dylan's big weigh-in at the clinic. I think he quite enjoys all the exercise and the running that will help to bring his heart rate up and to get him uh, a bit more active and to help him to lose the weight. Getting a bit puffed, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, so hopefully I'll lose some weight myself. <laughs> See how much you've lost. Hopefully you've lost a nice bit of weight. Hello! Oh. Hello, handsome boy. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> Hello, Hello, mate. How are you? He's gone straight to Dr. Scott. I love my boy. Well, <laughs> he knows who to keep sweet, doesn't he? Seeing Dylan walk into the practice, he is sprightly and he's happy, but more importantly, he looks lean and mean and ready for the scales. So he was 39 kilograms before. Oh, wow. 35.4. That is absolutely incredible. Really good. Well done. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> so he's lost four kilograms, which basically is about. 10% of his body weight. So it's like if I lost about 10 kilograms, you definitely see it. And we definitely see it with your boy. Yeah. Well done. Okay. By Dylan losing all this weight, it means he's far less likely to develop issues with his heart. He's far less likely to develop arthritis as a result of all that extra weight, less likely of developing diabetes. He's generally gonna be a very healthy and happy boy moving forward. So he's still got a little bit of a tum, but what you can feel and see here Look at those, they're ribs. Yeah, well done, Jane. You've Thank done you. so well. Brilliant. Good job. I'm really, really pleased that I've managed to keep him to his diet and not give him any extras. Um, uh, it's been hard, but I've done it and I've spoiled him in a different way. Carrots and love. <laughs> no more cake for you, Dylan. In the Miller home, Hello. Scully is well and truly Hello, recovered Bobby. from her space Hello. surgery, Hello, much Bobby. to the relief of Scott's Hello. wife, Zoe. <laughs> no one chooses to put their animal through surgery or through anaesthetic, but this was an important decision and it was the right decision to get her spayed. There we go. Wow. This is a bit of a treat, isn't it? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I cuddle with my puppy and my um, loving wife. Oh, there you go. Then, well, then you got it. You got it. Teal by you, that. Bozo and I were committed to neutering our dogs as we've always been. It's really important. There's so many unwanted and homeless dogs here in the UK and throughout the world, and neutering is the one way we can try and control those numbers. Oh, puppy. What do you think? What Should think I jump up puppy? if I could? What do you think of that puppy? Oh. When Scully came back, she was a bit blue, and Betty was so lovely because she just gave her that TLC and care that Scully always shows Betty because she's so careful with her. But I do think she's much happier now. She's up and bouncing around, and the two of them can do their rough and tumbling again. Oh, this is a very beautiful family scene, isn't it? Hi, Claire, how are you? Hi, Scott. And Scott and is you. meeting Claire Hello. and her Meet daughters to check Maxie. on Morticia's Maxie. progress Maxie. after the Boston Terrier's knee operation. Let me get my hands on that little patient. Hello, Tishy. Hello, baby. Hello, 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 buddy. <laughs> Hello, baby. You simply cannot push that kneecap out anymore. She's not painful at all. She's just sitting okay. here comfortable. That's very, very good. I'm so happy with that. So I think the proof really is in the pudding with you, isn't it, missus? We need to see you running around and hopefully that mischievous little skip of hers is uh, going away for good. So how can we get her to run? Ball. Ball? Ball. <laughs> She's just moving beautifully well, isn't she? Nice and strong on both legs. No evidence of the skipping at all, Cleo. I can't it's see okay, it anyway. It's good, is it? Yeah. yeah. Ready? <laughs> Morticia is running so beautifully, moving so well, there doesn't seem to be any pain, no discomfort, and that knee looks absolutely perfect, so I'm very happy. 
<laughs> I think her knees are perfect, but I think that fetch is rubbish. <laughs> that is awful. Okay. Well, Tish is off to the races again now. I can let her off the lead, she can run around and have a great time. And she's going to have years and years of no arthritis. Great. You've been brave and you've invested in the future of her knee health, which is great. And now all you need to invest in is maybe a little bit of dog training. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to work on a fetch. <laughs> You like quail's eggs, don't you? You could do with some of those nice quail's eggs now, couldn't you? Yes, you poor little thing. In Richmond, it's an anxious day for one of Scott's long-term clients, drama teacher Julia. Such a good girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Mm. My last plug was called Oscar, and I always wanted him to have a wife, and I thought I'd have to call her BAFTA, so I'd have Oscar and BAFTA. But alas, he died before I got BAFTA, but I still called her BAFTA. So that's how she got the name. Another close-up, Mr DeMille. Recently, Julia became alarmed when she discovered a lump growing under BAFTA's eye. Getting sleepy again, aren't you? A biopsy confirmed that it's cancerous. Which was a horrible blow to me, because I always hear that word, you just think, oh no. I don't think it's nothing. I'm just hoping that it turns out to be nothing. That's what I'm hoping. What can one do but hope? It's a good girl. Today, the little pug is booked in with Scott for surgery to have the whole lump removed. BAFTA, are you all right, Danny? It will be sent away for further testing to determine the type of cancer and whether it has spread. Good morning, Julia. Hello, Scott. Hello, yes, gorgeous. Is. How lovely to see you. And How are you? you? Oh, I'm grand, thank you very much. And how's our girl? Are you going to look after my little pug for me? Well, of course. Thank I you. I dare not do anything else. No, thank you. I know she's in safe hands. Come on, gorgeous. <laughs> do you want to come in Uncle Scotty's safe hands? She's yes. Good girl. Julia is an incredible lady. She's so much fun. She's so vibrant. She's so full of life. And Bafta's a great little dog. She's so characterful. She's strong and she's brave. She's pretty much Julia in dog form. Well, first things first, Julia, mm. tremendous matching outfits. Well, we have to look our best, don't we, Beth? And it makes a girl feel special as she's yes. coming in for surgery today. So let me have a little feel of this little lump. So, yeah, it feels literally like a pinhead. Julia's brought BAFTA back into the practice today because just recently we've diagnosed a mast cell tumour underneath her left eye. So mast cells can be devastating and they can cause lots of issues throughout the body, not just in the skin area that you oh, find yes. them. Yeah, I got you. And sadly for BAFTA, she's a bit of a cliche when it comes to mast cell tumours because pugs are very prone to them. Oh, poor little Baf. So it's very good that we've found this very tiny lump mm. early because yeah. it does mean that we can remove it and then find out exactly what grade the type of tumour is, and that really gives us a good idea as to how dangerous or not it is to little BAFTA. I've got you. The range of possibilities today are either fairly benign, we can remove it really quickly and easily, and it shouldn't spread, or it could be a very nasty type, which means that it may have already spread to other parts of BAFTA's body, and it could mean that BAFTA isn't around for very long. You and I have been friends for a while, so yes, I know Scott, and I can absolutely. see that you're worried. Well, of course I am, but I know if anybody can sort her out, you will. I'm terrified, to be honest, because madding though she is, I adore her. I shall be relieved if we hear that nothing awful has happened, but I shall worry, of course I will. Yeah, it's just got to hope. Be good, be good for Scott. Yes, good girl. Hi, Tina. Hi, Lily. What do you have there? This is a little stray that's just been handed in at reception. Oh, hello, beautiful. She's gorgeous. 
At the Isleworth practice, Nurse Lily has a new patient for vet Tina. She was found by a member of the public. Okay. Um, and he was a bit worried about her, but she feels a little bit skinny. Mm. So she's brought her into us. All right. Shall we just check you over, honey bunch? She brought her in and said if we didn't find an owner, she'd like to adopt her. But she thought she should do the right thing and double check first. Let's see if you belong to anybody, miss. Okay. Hopefully she does. The first step is to see if the stray kitten has a microchip. You just got to remember when you check, they can migrate under the skin. So you always check the whole body from head to tail, including the legs. So unfortunately, there's no chip there. Oh, so sorry, miss. There's no owner, I'm afraid. Oh. OK. It gets a little bit difficult when there's no microchip because there's no way to trace where the animals come from. It puts the importance to remind owners that cats do need to be microchipped. They wander around and they can easily get lost, as in this case. She's been scratching quite a lot. I think she might have some fleas. Oh, there's a flea. Mm. I think we found the cause for the scratching then. But Tina has another more serious concern with the little stray. Depending on eye colour, up to 80% of white cats can be born with congenital deafness. So what I want you to do is I want you to try face her and keep her on you. And then I'm going to make a noise over here, quite a loud one, to see if she can hear it, OK? All right. So just get her attention that way. She is reacting, not as much as I'd expect her to. I'd expect a cat to... To turn around. Mm. Yeah. Mm. OK. So she's reacting a little bit to the noise. Mm. So probably there could be a little bit of a hearing impairment there. So that's something we just need to keep in mind. Yeah. If the owner... If we can't find the owner, then we might need to look at rehoming to mention to the prospective yeah. new owner. I'm not too worried about her quality of life. Um, I examined the ears with the otoscope and they're healthy inside. So it's possibly something she was born with. And if she has a little bit of hearing, she will adapt all her other senses and manage and have a good quality of life with the right owners. You're going to stay with us for a week? Yeah. I think that's a good idea, hey? We can fatten her up a little bit. Yeah, she's probably very hungry. Definitely. Legally, we have to keep her here for seven days and advertise her to see whether we do find an owner. Hey, sweetie, should we get rid of those nasty fleas before we give you some dinner? How does that sound? Yeah. So we just have to watch and see, see whether anyone comes forward. But either way, whether we find her old owner or uh, the lady takes her home, she's got somewhere to live for the rest of her life. You're looking for food, miss, aren't you? Should we go give you some dinner? Oh, oh. Ooh, that's a funny noise, isn't it? Hey, Regan. Hiya. <laughs> this is BAFTA. Hi, BAFTA. Hello, cutie. Oh, wow, she likes Hi. you. Hello. In Richmond, Scott is about to perform surgery on little pug BAFTA. She's a girl's girl, I think. Vet nurse Reagan will be assisting. So what is it we're doing with her today, with her eye? Is it? Well, yes, it's a tiny, tiny little lump. You'll barely be able to see it just in the skin fold here. OK. And unfortunately, we took a little sample because we were a bit worried about it. We sent it off to the lab and they've said that it's a mast cell tumour. OK. All right. Should we give you an anaesthetic and get that nasty lump off? What do you think? Still wagging your tail, so that's a good sign. Today with BAFTA is all about just getting rid of this lump. We want to take quite a wide margin and remove it completely to allow the pathologist to have a look, not only to grade the tumour, to tell me should I be concerned about the possibility of its spread, but also has it spread locally within the skin itself. All right, sleepy time now. Mm -hmm. Spray Good girl. Good girl. All right. Brave girl. Ow. Oh. Suddenly, there's... there's a problem. BAFTA has stopped breathing. Come on. Come on. Come on, BAFTA. At the Richmond Clinic, BAFTA the pug is about to undergo surgery to remove a cancerous lump. But suddenly, she stopped breathing. 
Pugs always present quite a challenge when you anaesthetise them because their nostrils generally are quite small, but also in the back of the throat there's an elongated soft palate that floats over the windpipe. And it means that when you knock them out under anaesthetic, they can't really breathe very well. Come on. More breath there. Was that what, did you say you just saw one? Yeah, there's another one. A few little breaths there, did you see that? Yeah. Okay. There you go, Basta. That's what we like to call in the veterinary profession, breathing. <laughs> you know? It's not too much to ask for, is it really? No, it's not, but it is what we want to see, so. BAFTA did something that a lot of dogs do, which is breath holding. So when you give the anaesthetic, they don't breathe for a little while until the carbon dioxide levels build up to the point where it encourages the animal to breathe. But in the case of a pug, you have got all of these abnormalities to their respiratory tract anyway. So the last thing you need is a pug that holds their breath. All right, so we can see the lump a little bit better now. So there it is there. Interestingly, as soon as we clipped the eye, that lump really did get quite angry indeed. It seemed to be mad that we'd exposed it. Now it had gone from kind of a pinprick sized lump to quite a decent sized red mass. So now more than ever, I'm very keen to get rid of it. Okay, let's go. Good girl, come on then. Okay. Good girl, is it? Here we go. Okay, so just about to start cutting. All okay? Yeah. It'll be quite a decent amount of tissue I have to pull over here. We're dealing with really quite small margins here. I can't move too much because it's in a really important area around the eye. So if I cause too much tension, then it uh, might affect the way the eye can close and obviously how BAFTA looks. So it's a, a balancing act. There we go. All right, so that's that little tumour out of BAFTA's body. Now I'm sending off the mass to the lab and we have an agonising wait over the next few days until that result comes back. I'm really hoping that the tumour that I've removed is a low grade type of tumour and by removing it simply, that's the end of the problem. But it could be that it's something quite malignant, can have already spread through BAFTA's organs and really be a major issue in her future. There you go, sweetheart. There we go. Right. She is a really cute bug. <laughs> right there. Is that right? Hopefully that's pug for thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. BAFTA will sleep off the anaesthetic and be ready for collection later in the day. Hopefully that's that, eh? Hello, Maz. Hello, Julia. I've come to fetch my little BAFTA. Aww. How is she? She's good. Three hours later, Julia has arrived, anxious to see her precious little pug. So where is she? Right, if you grab a seat, I will let Scott know I you're will. here. Thank you. I will, I will grab a seat. Bye-bye, <laughs> boy. <laughs> you're very gorgeous. Yes, you are. I didn't really sleep last night because I was worried about her. I just want her home with me to know that she's all right. Hello, Mummy. Hello, there Baffy. she is. Hello, my little Baff. Oh, what's she got her little tongue like that for? Oh, she's a bit dopey, isn't she? She's nice and sleepy, which is quite useful, isn't it, to be able to examine this eye. But you can see, hopefully, there I've removed oh, that yes. lump there. Yes. Oh, yes. A little bit of plastic surgery to boot to well, make it. Well, thank you for doing beautiful. that. That's but brilliant. of course, now we have our we have to wait for the results wait to get the lab to do what they need to do in order to determine how worried we should be yeah, with regards to this tumour. Although I'm really happy to have the cancer removed from BAFTA's face, I'm obviously very concerned about whether it's spread or not. I'm really hopeful that it hasn't. I've done everything I can to try and rid BAFTA's little body of cancer, 
but all we can do is cross our fingers and pause and hope for the best. I think you deserve a BAFTA after today. <laughs> I think you deserve a BAFTA. I think after you today. do too. Sir. Well, thank you very we much. Do. Let's, let's give ourselves let's a award, have a shall we? Let's a party, yeah, especially if everything's all right. Yes. Definitely. Okay. All right. Definitely. Well, I'm going to bring the champagne for when I see you next. And quail's eggs for her because she loves quail's, quail's eggs. Quail's eggs. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> At Scott's Come Richmond on. Clinic, Shira, new patient Shearer has arrived with his owner. Come on. Good boy. Hi, Sam. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? Bethany and her 13-year-old yeah. Collie are good friends with Nurse Sam. You're very nervous, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Don't like coming to see vets. No, he doesn't like it. He's not a happy boy. Poor little lad. So Shearer is a lovely boy, but he is a collie. So collies have some quite specific breed traits where they can be a little bit um, suspicious. Oh, he's really scared. Which has made it very difficult when we come to the vets because he gets very nervous. And as soon as things get a bit serious, that's when he starts to get a little bit snappy. Come on, Shearer. You're going to be all right. Come on. This he's way. not so sure. No. <laughs> Bless him. The 13-year-old Collie is extremely anxious around vets, so it's been a long time between checkups. Bethany is hoping Scott will be able to win over the nervous old dog. Hello, Bethany. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Oh, that's good. I've heard lots about you, but possibly a little bit more about your chap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's all right. Well, we'll do the pleasantries in the consult room, shall we? Okay, cool. Come, Come on, on through. Shira, this way. I know that Scott would be sensitive to Shearer's anxiety, and he won't mind potentially getting bitten. This is what he does most, he just kind of hangs out at the door. <laughs> you can smell freedom, can't you? Is that the escape route, my boy? Yeah. He's not a massive fan of the vets. Don't take it personally. OK. <laughs> Sam's given me some history on Shearer, and he has just had some unfortunate incidents at vet practices. So hopefully a new environment, a new vet, he might be a different dog. That's good. I'm just going to do my usual thing of not really looking at him in the eye because yeah. that's always a bit threatening yeah. and just sort of be quite dismissive and submissive and just see what he does. Hello. He's okay. just one of them collies where the signs are very subtle. Yes. His ears go back and his eyes go wide and yes. then that's, that's him saying. And it can just be a, just a, like, I'm fine. Not fine. Just yeah, be very he doesn't, he doesn't give so, much warning. He no. won't growl. He will just snap. OK, my heart rate's rising just having this conversation. <laughs> so beyond yeah. his little snapping issue, what else is concerning you? So he's got a lot of lumps and bumps all over his body, but then there's one hard lump that's come up on his shoulder blade that I'm a little concerned about. Check his teeth. He's also not microchipped. He's not or vaccinated. Right. Well, we definitely need to microchip him. <laughs> yeah. Um, now the law is in. We need yeah. to make sure that's done. And vaccinations are always important. So, wow. Full service, please. Yeah. So what's probably best is that we go downstairs together, you pop the muzzle on, then you say your goodbyes, and then we get going. Okay. Yeah? Brilliant. Come on then. Come on then, mate. Good boy. Yep. Oh, he's very keen for that door, isn't he? Yeah, bless him. <laughs> Escape. Hooray. There's another one. <laughs> So far, Shira has been beautifully behaved, but you can tell that he's quite nervous and that makes him unpredictable. So sadly, we still need to muzzle him in order to put him under anaesthetic and fully assess Bethany's long list of concerns. All right. It's like leaving your baby. Auntie Sam will look after you. Knowing that they want someone that they know around them and, and there's just lots of unknown people and they're sticking needles in him. All right, Bye. Bethany. OK. See you later. See ya. Bye. I know, I know. It's really tough. And just hoping that everything will be all right. We're not all bad. No, no, no. In order to get Shira anaesthetised, we first need to sedate him. But he's a nervous boy and so not going to take this lying down. So we need to use a technique similar to the one we use in larger animals, the door technique. I know, Matt. I think you have an awareness of what we're about to do, don't you? We feed the lead through the gap in the door so we can squeeze in with the door in the wall and it produces a race, which is what we use in horses, for example, to keep them still and protect the people that are working with them. OK, Nathan, right? you ready? Let's just hope that this nice, genial chap will take it well. 
Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Moving towards the door. At Richmond, okay, nice. Scott ready? and his Just team are trying to there. sedate nervous Collie Good Shearer. Good boy. 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 Well done. Well done, mate. You got it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh dear. Horrible people. Okay. Yeah, we'll let him back out again. Oh, what awful people we are. Hey? Oh dear. Oh dear, that door. Hey, I blame the door, don't you? See, look, he likes me because he's too horrible. <laughs> Shear is not a bad boy. He's simply afraid. But a fearful dog is an unpredictable dog. And so sadly, we just can't take any chances. Phase two. Ready? No one's there. We're ready. Oh, he's a good boy. That's it. That's a great shot, Sam. Well done. Once the sedation starts to kick in, we place a second muzzle over Shearer's eyes, which helps to keep him calm and that allows us to place the catheter and finally get him anaesthetised. Can you just come and turn the anaesthetic on for me, Sam? Thank you. Good boy. Big, deep, calm breaths. It's all right. Okay, good boy. Now that Shearer is finally under, we have to work quickly, and that's why I've got both Sam and Nathan helping me today. Bethany's given us a really long list of concerns to get through, and at 13 years old, Shearer's an old boy, so we don't want to keep him under any longer than we have to. Now, let's have a little feel of where that lump was. If we all just have a good feel of him, just from head to toe, and feel anything that you're concerned about. Ah, there it is. Can I actually pass me those clippers in front of you, Nathan, please? Yeah, having a little feel of this, it's a clearly defined lump within the skin itself. It feels a little bit fluid-filled. So I think that this might just be a dermoid cyst, so something that's benign growth in the skin. I'm just going to pop a needle in it real quick. I'll just have a look under a microscope. Okay, everything I can see here is just normal tissue. So I think in this case, Shira is an old boy. He's developed normal lumps and bumps that older animals do, but it's certainly nothing to worry about. So we don't need to remove it. But Sam's found something that does need to be removed. There's not a lump, but that is a big tick. It's quite it's juicy. It's massive. Ooh, oh, nasty blighter. Okay, well. Not bad news, because we can just take that off. So let's remove that tick, out. please, Sam. Yep. Good news keeps on coming. Ticks are nasty little creatures that suck blood, but they can also carry some really nasty diseases. In the UK, they can spread something called Lyme's disease, which people can also get. In the larger European continent, they can spread tick fever, and in Australia, they're known to cause paralysis. Wow. <laughs> That's terrible. Massive. He's massive. Oh, he's a big boy and he's still moving. Means you've got the head out, so well done, Sam. <laughs> the best way to prevent ticks is by using either a topical liquid applied in between the shoulder blades of your dog, or there are some oral medications that you can use as well. These things either kill the tick before it can bite, or if it does bite, it kills it before it can transmit those nasty diseases. Scott now wants to check on the condition of the 13-year-old's teeth. You know, really very good teeth for a dog of his age. And I feel like I've gone boldly when no one has gone before, which is inside the mouth of uh, the savage beast. He's not really, he's a pussycat. Vaccinations are very important, but it's a shame with Shira that this first has to be done under an aesthetic. All right, so last but not least, we'll just do the microchip and then we can wake this boy up. Legal now. He is, he's all legal. Hey, good boy. Right, that's it. All right, let's wake this boy up. I think we're good friends now. Mm. Oi. I say to him whilst he's fast asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not very often that you get a dog as old as Shearer come in with as many concerns as he had and yet get to send him home with a clean bill of health. Good boy. Now, sleepy times for the old man, eh? 
And hopefully we've shown him that there's really nothing too much to worry about. I'm even hoping that I might have made a new friend. Good boy. You have a snooze, I'll call mummy. Good lad. What's this? At the Isleworth practice, Nurse Lily has her hands full, looking after the little stray that was handed in three days ago. You really were hungry, weren't you? So legally, we have to keep her here for seven days and advertise her to see whether we do find an owner. We have to give them that opportunity to come forward and say, this is my cat. Can't get any work done when you're about, can you? Nope. <laughs> Yeah, so we checked for a microchip, but we couldn't find one, unfortunately. So if she does have an owner out there, we can't track her down. I can't believe no one's come forward for her. I know, she's just so cute. I know. Look at that face. <laughs> the playful kitten is lapping up the attention from Nurse Lily and Aussie receptionist oh, Liz. You're adorable, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, bless her. <laughs> she's so funny. Yeah, so we'll just have to watch and see, see whether anyone comes forward. If not, though, I think we might have an owner in the lady who brought her in, but she seems very keen to take her home. <laughs> Hello, champ. It's time to go home now, hey? Back at Richmond, Scott's patient, Shira, is ready to go home. You can take that off, because I trust you. Yes, I do. There we go. Always a good boy, see? There we go. Should we go home and see mummy? Yeah, come on then. Upstairs. Shira's owner, Bethany, can't wait to be reunited with her boy. I thought I was going to be all right, and then as soon as I left him, I started fearing the worst. It was horrible. I didn't want to leave him. Where's Mummy? Where's Mummy? Go and get her. Shira! Hi, she Puppy. is. Look, who's this? Puppy! I'm so sorry. Oh, he's a good boy. He's <laughs> sleepy. Oh, you got me. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, puppy. So, I'm very glad to see you guys together and he uh, has been such an angel. He's been a, a joy, really, haven't you, mate? You've been a good boy. Joy. But the good news is even better because not only has he been a gentleman, <laughs> but uh, all the concerns that you had, uh -huh. they're not concerns. Oh, that's brilliant. So, the lump here is just a normal old cyst that's present in his skin. Okay. And that's absolutely fine. No need to remove it. Yes, he's an old boy, he's got a few old dog problems, but that's all they are. That's good. Well, at least we've come and got him, yeah, got him all checked, checked out. over. But yeah, symptoms of old age, but not of disease. Oh, yay, good boy. I'm so happy that he's got basically a clean bill of health. Now I hope that you'll come and do some social visits. It'd absolutely. be nice to see him and not have to do anything mean to him. Absolutely. Hey, buddy. And Scott was absolutely brilliant with him. And now we can go home for dinner. <laughs> Say thank you, Scott. Bye, champ. Hey, Take thank care. You so much. See you later. Nice to meet you. Bye, you too. Bye. Good boy. Come on, puppy. It's a new day. And in Richmond, it's an early start for Scott. Oh, hello. Hello. What you doing? Um, I am packing up for a trip up north. What are you going up north for? Um, well, there's this amazing donkey sanctuary that's run by this incredible family of women who oh, yeah. love donkeys. Jenny, the youngest girl, she has set this place up. Absolutely inspirational girl. But at the same time, they've been through a lot of tragedy. Really? Oh they all attended the Ariana Grande concert. And Jenny's two aunts were caught up in the blast. They were quite badly injured. And they really struggled to keep the sanctuary going. And uh, it's only with the help of volunteers they've been able to do that. So that's why I'm putting my hand up to go and help. Like everyone watching, I was horrified by the Manchester bombings. You feel so useless, as there's nothing that you can do to help. But today's different. 
I'm on my way to visit a family of survivors and hopefully I'll be able to help by offering treatment to the animals they love. Scott is heading four hours north to West Yorkshire and the Wonky Donkey Sanctuary. Nineteen-year-old Jenny is the founder and is running the sanctuary with her mum and two aunts. They're currently caring for 19 rescue donkeys. When donkeys do arrive here, they are in a very poor condition. Um, you get a lot of the time donkeys that don't really know where to place themselves, feel very uncomfortable. They do come in as a shell of a donkey and then they end up being a very unique little character. Hello, ladies. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm Scott. I'm Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi, I'm Jo. Thanks for coming. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm Josie. Hello, Josie. Nice to meet you. There's a thing going on here. I'm Jenny. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet you as well. What a perfect family to be running a donkey sanctuary where males are called Jacks and females are called Jennies. Yeah, absolutely. It was meant to be, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm very excited to get stuck in and help you look after your lovely animals. So I'm going to chuck my overalls on and then maybe you can introduce me to my first patient. Yeah, absolutely. baby donkey first. Though. Baby She's donkey first. All right. Looking forward to it. You guys look like trouble. <laughs> So here she is. Oh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> she Hello. looks gorgeous, but she's very, very naughty. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Are you naughty? Come here, Rosie. Rosie. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello. Oh, my goodness. You're so cute. Rosie is the most adorable donkey that we've got, um, but mainly because she's the baby donkey. Having her as a baby has just been the most amazing experience just to be able to hand rear her, really. Oh, she's so nice. So what does she need doing today? Uh, so today it's microchipping and vaccinations for oh, Rosie. Dear. <laughs> I'll hug her now because she won't want to hug me later if I have to do all that stuff. All right. Oh, baby. Hey. Mwah. Ready? Good girl. Sorry to do that to you, sweetie. Okay. Performing a microchipping on a donkey isn't very nice. It is a little bit like harpooning a small horse. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit of local anaesthetic under the skin just to make it as pain-free as possible. There we go. Good girl. Come on then, Rosie. Around this way. Brave girl. Brave girl. That's it. Oh, Rosie, look. Okay, you ready? Brave girl. There we go. Okay. Good girl, in. Rosie. Very good. Oh, brave girl. Well done. Good girl. Well, the carrot worked. <laughs> yeah, it did. Good girl. All right, let's just scan her and make sure that that's working okay. There we go. Your donkey officially beeps. Good girl, Rosie. Well done. Now we just got to give her a vaccination. Okay, just going in there, and that's it. Done. Oh, good girl! She's been an incredibly amicable and easygoing patient, which is great for me. Not that much donkey experience. You're so lovely, but naughty. I can tell you're naughty. Hey, She's like a, a toddler, isn't she? She Just is a that. very naughty toddler. We've entered terrible twos, I'm afraid, already. <laughs> yes. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. At the Wonky Donkey Sanctuary in West Yorkshire, Scott's next patient is Olaf the goat. A goat at a donkey sanctuary? Yes. <laughs> He's still very new, he is very sweet, so hopefully he won't mind you visiting him. Jenny's Aunt Josie is still recovering after her leg was badly injured in the Manchester bombing. And she feels a special connection with Olaf. I think it's when you see that something can be so frightened and confused and they don't understand, which is very similar to being in a traumatic event. You can just go and have a little touch and, and you see them improve and gain confidence. It's so rewarding. I think it gives you that good feeling and that's what helps you to heal, you know. Well, there's a lovely old goat. <laughs> which one? <laughs> How did a goat manage to find his way to a donkey sanctuary, Josie? Well, we got contacted by the police at three in the morning to say that they'd found a donkey on the motorway and would we take it in. So, of course, we said yes. 
and then this arrived. <laughs> so he said, that it's not actually a donkey, it's a goat. And we said, oh, right, well, we'll take it anyway. So we took him in, very timid. Yeah. He's a really sweet little man. He's very sweet. We don't know anything about him, of course, yeah. and no one's claimed him. So it looks like he's going to be staying. We don't know if he's been hit by a car at all. He just spent three days in a corner, wouldn't come near you. Jenny went in, spent quite a bit of time with him and progressively started to eat and drink. <laughs> Donkeys are fascinated by him. Yeah, well, I bet they are. Again, that's the weirdest looking donkey I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so what do I need to do with this guy? Well, he needs vaccinating, yeah. worming and hoof trim. trimming. Right, go. you're a, a taskmaster, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a little look at your hooves, can I, my man? Hey? I think it's the left front one that seems to be twisted. You can see it's actually flared out a yeah. little bit, isn't it? That toe is just a little bit overgrown. Yeah. Okay. He's probably been on soft ground for quite a while, and as a result, they're overgrowing, and it's leading to him rolling in on his hooves. So you can see the insides of both of his cloven hooves yeah. there are just a little bit wide, so we just need to trim away a little bit of that. Mm. Just taking that extra bit off there. All right, sweetheart, there we go. I haven't done a goat manicure in a while, <laughs> I must admit. Good boy, you're being a very brave boy. Eh? Not as brave as your mum and your great aunt, <laughs> but you know, he's been pretty good. Because you've had a few problems with your leg as well, yeah. haven't you? Yes, it was a bit of an ordeal. I can imagine, and he's complaining about a hoof trip. I know. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be keeping quiet if I was you, young man. Gee whiz. Josie's an incredible woman and so brave after what she's been through as a result of the Manchester bombings. But now she's back working here at the sanctuary, doing what she loves, which is looking after these beautiful creatures. Milkshake for goats, <laughs> hey? Scott did really, really well. He was patient, kind, firm, and got the job done. Well, he was a pretty good patient, wouldn't he you was, think? He yes. was very good, yeah. 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 All right. He's come a long way in a short time. So. He has, yeah. <laughs> In Isleworth, it's now been seven days since a stray kitten was handed in, and it's an exciting day for her rescuer, Georgia. Hiya! Hello! You come to pick up your little white I cat? I have, I have. Has she got a name yet? Yeah, I've called her Alba, actually. Oh, bless yeah. what's No mean? owner has come forward Latin. to claim the little Ooh, like kitten, yeah. so a delighted Georgia yeah. has come to She's adopt her. Sweet. Do you want me to go get her for I you? I really love that, yes, please. No worries. Thank you. I fell in love with her the moment I met her, so I couldn't really resist buying her toys and cat litter and the trays in the hope, you know, in the hope that she would be mine. And I've never had pets before, so I'm just really glad that I can have her. Are you ready to meet your new mum? I think that's a yes. Here she is. Oh, hey. Oh, <laughs> hello, Alba. Hello. I think she recognises you. <laughs> oh, I think she does. Hello, baby. It's so nice to see the reaction of both of them. And I'm sure Alba will have a fantastic time at a new home. She was just so hungry and skinny when I met her. I found her in the street and she looked really hungry. So I brought her into the nearest vets that I could find. I could have taken her home there and then, to be honest with you. You happy to have her in your arms? Oh, I'm so happy. I've had to wait a week, haven't I? I know. We're all going to be sorry to see her go here. She's so sweet. Oh. Hey. Hey. It's a lovely thought, really, that Alba possibly chose me as her owner because when I first met her and she was really purring and really affectionate and she cried when I left her at the vets the first day I brought her here. So, to be honest, it's a relief that I can take her home today. Here's your transport to your new home. Let's get you home, darling. Here we go. Yes. Aww. It's been amazing to have Alba here all week. We're really going to miss her, but she's definitely going to a great home with Georgia. And although it is sad to see her go, I'm so pleased she's found a home. Thank you so much. No worries. I can't thank you guys enough. Aww. I'm so glad I brought her in. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, we'll get you home. My goodness! At the Wonky Donkey Sanctuary in West Yorkshire, Scott has one last job. Where have you been hiding these little kitties, Joanne? Scott's been asked to look at new mum Coco, trying to care for five hungry pups. 
She looks like she's seen some better days, though. Yeah, she's not doing too well regarding her weight and her skin. Mm. Coco is a lovely Rottweiler girl. She's about two and a half to three years old. She arrived here from her old owners and they couldn't look after her anymore owing to family health. I'd say we'd have to think it's probably some kind of mange and yeah. I would suggest it's probably psychoptic mange. Yeah. So I would like to officially announce that the milk bar is now closed. Woohoo, Coco. Um, <laughs> I don't think that this little lady needs to give up any more of yeah. her hard-earned nutrition yeah. on these puppies. She's done a great job. It's very clear that Coco is very thin, and as a result, her immune system is going to be quite weak, which is probably why she's developed the mange in the first place. The puppies need to be weaned, and so Mum can start putting on some weight and getting healthy again. So we're just going to apply a liquid that we'll be using every couple of weeks just to try and knock off the nasty mange mice. If you give her a little treat whilst we here, put this on. Hey. Yeah. What's she got? Oh, what's she got? That's a good girl. Okay. There you go. So, my love, I think let's start that me time right now. And I think because we're going to have to uh, examine the puppies and probably have to do a few mean things to them, yeah. it's maybe best that slightly nervous mum goes and have a little little rest. Yes. Yeah. Hey. There you go, Sammy. Good girl. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> She's off. I've shown a lot of restraint. So, look, hand over the puppy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> look at you! Mwah. So who's this one? This one's Bear. Bear. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good name. He's going to be a big bear, aren't you? Yeah. Now these guys, a bit young to be vaccinated as yet, but we can microchip them. Yeah. So have we got something to entertain his mouth then? Yeah. Have we got some? Oh, here we go. There we go. Very good. You ready? Brave boy. Oh, well done. Well done. Good boy, oh. Bear. So let's just make sure he beeps. And he beeps. The brave boy. Right, so who have we got next? We've got Prim here. Me too, one. Oh, wow. Good girl. She's done. Okay. Good boy. Well done. I can't believe how brave these puppies are being. Well done. And then last one. Very brave puppies, Good girl. eh? Yeah. yeah. So that's five very healthy puppies, all microchips, and they took that on the chin very nicely, I thought. They did really well, yeah. yeah. But well, I just can't believe the amount of work you have to do looking after the donkeys and a goat, and then you take on dogs as well, but there sort of is a little bit of reward, isn't there? There is. And they're at its own sort of special way, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. You're a nice puppy. But now it's time for Scott to say goodbye to owner Jenny and her family. I think we better finish that bit first, yeah? Eating well. Very good. Very well, good. Jumping on a carrot wall. I'm going to head back to London, ladies. So okay. thanks so much for having me. You're very you. welcome. Yes, thank you We've for coming. We really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Can I just have one more That's donkey harsh. cuddle yeah. before yeah. I go? <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, love it. See you again. Bye, Bye. Scott. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Now, Betty, we're waiting for Scott. I don't know whether to look forward to seeing him or to dread it. In Richmond, Julia is at home with BAFTA, nervously awaiting Scott's arrival. Scott recently removed a cancerous tumour from underneath BAFTA's eye. Today, he's making a home visit to deliver the pathology results. Hello, hey, Julia. Scott. How are you, lovely? Well, I'm a bit apprehensive. Are you? As you can see. <laughs> Baffy, you're looking a little bit grumpy. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's chat things through. So, we knew it was a tumour. Mm, okay. I know. This but is... the news is good. <gasps> Scott! Oh! Tell me, tell me. So, it's come back as a low grade mast cell tumour, which means it's highly unlikely to spread. Oh, okay. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, thank God. So I'm not going to lose her. You're not going to lose her anytime soon. Thank you so much. Not I can't you tell well. you how worried I've been. You're very oh, well. I've been so worried. I know. Oh, that's wonderful, Scott. Well, I think with all of that good news, we need to celebrate with our BAFTA party. Bubbles, oh, baby. Hooray, <laughs> Baffy. Look, Baffy, you're going to have some of that. And apparently, <gasps> quail's eggs. My God, Baffy, they're your favourite, aren't they? 
It's possibly the poshest dog treat I've <laughs> ever heard of. I feel really happy and really relieved and maddening though she can be with her barking and her greed, I don't want to lose her, so I'm very glad I'm not going to. Oh, oh my God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. It popped, didn't it, Beth? <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm better at surgery than I am at opening <laughs> champagne bottles. <laughs> okay, Beffy, let's not forget you. Ready? Nice and gently, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another, please. <laughs> he has saved her life. He shouldn't be called Bet on a Hill, he should be called Bet on a Pedestal, because he's certainly on a pedestal for me. Well, cheers to BAFTA, long may she reign. To Baffy and to Scott, thank you so much oh, you're for what very you've welcome. done. Save my little girl's life. Thank you so much. Cheers. It means so much. This is Fifi. We're here to see the vet. Yeah, no problem. Just take a seat over there for me. Maybe... In Thank Richmond, you. Eva, Adam and their son Jakob have brought in their injured spoodle Fifi to see Scott. Fifi had a little accident and we went to emergency vet yesterday and it's um, highly possible that, sh that the leg is broken. So we're here to see Scott. We are really worrying because we can see that it's not, it's not right because she's like crying. Hello, guys. You all right? Oh, dear. Fifi, you're looking very sad today and sporting a very interesting sock, so I think that tells me something. Let's have a chat, shall we, guys? In your camera. We pray that Dr. Scott will put her back on her four legs as soon as possible. Tell me what's happened. She fallen down the sofa. She fell off a sofa? Yes. OK. And this is the temporary bandage emergency one. Poor little Fifi. She's such a sad little shadow of her former self. Normally she's the bouncy, happy, white, fluffy dog, like my dog Scully. She looks very sad and dilly. And is it very sore? Yeah, she's quite tender, just me touching that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Is enough for her no, to flinch. No, she didn't want us to, to touch it at all. Well, I think probably what's best is if we just do a little conscious x-ray. Yeah. And from that, we can okay. work out exactly what's going on and what we're gonna do about it. Sound good, Jakob? Hey, yeah? Have you fallen off the sofa ever? Let's just check this arm. Just to be sure. Yeah, then. that's good. That one's good. Excellent. So hopefully, Fifi's leg will be good too. Yeah? <laughs> okay then, Fifi, let's pop you downstairs. Okay, guys, if you grab a seat out front, I'll take an x-ray with your little girl and then uh, we can have a look at the x-ray. Yeah? Okay. All right, say bye-bye. See you in a second. We really worry it's what uh, Scott will say and what's the condition of the leg as well and what will happen. All right, Reagan. Nurse Reagan will be assisting Scott with the x-ray. Good girl. Taking Fifi downstairs, it's very easy just to pop a leg under the x-ray machine with me all gowned up in lead. X-rays. And we'll see what lies beneath. Wow. Oh. Gosh, yikes. At Scott St. Margaret's practice. Hi, Beata, how are you? Fine, thanks. Concerned owner Beata and her Somebody's pet hedgehog sleeping. Luther oh. have arrived for well, an appointment with vet Tina. Tina. And Tina will be with you in a minute. Thank you. Okay. She has a small bump on her head and I want it to be checked that there's nothing wrong, you know, just to be on the safe side. I really love her. I can't imagine that there is something wrong with her again. It's been a tough few months for the little hedgehog. This is very hard. She had to undergo major surgery when Scott discovered a huge cancerous lump that had to be removed. So this is absolutely huge. I mean, for a hedgehog, this would be like having a bowling ball growing in your abdomen. Oof. Morning, Beata. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi. Fine, thanks. Come on, bring Thank Luta to great. <laughs> the love Beata has for Luta is comparable to any other relationship any owner has with their dog or cat or parrot. It's, it's just so special and it's, it's very touching, actually. 
All right, what's going on with Luta today? I just want you to please do a checkup because there's a small bump on her head. It's very slowly growing, but I think it just to be on the safe side, you know, just yes. have a look at it and, and then try to figure out what is it. Okay, let's get her out and have a little look. Hello, honey. Oh, she, she says, I'm tired. Oh, oh come God. on. Luta. Come on. Are you going to let go of the blanket, honey? Luta's come in today quite a bit hissy, um, which I think is more related to the practice and the smell of the practice and her remembering of her previous oh. time here. Yeah? Maybe bring her out with the towel and when we put her down, <laughs> she might let it go. I don't think. Here we go, honey. Come, we can be best friends again. <laughs> Beata is concerned about her baby and we need to put her concerns to rest today. Maybe she did bump her head or something like I, that? I don't know. So what I would like to do is to give her a little bit mm. of gas again mm. like last time so that she can let me sample it and then I can make a smear and see what's in there and if it's something we have to worry about. Mm. Any lump or bump that you find on any animal is a concern. Yeah. We need to make sure that it's not something nasty that can spread. So we need to take the relevant steps and today we'll be sampling it first to see if it does need removal or not. Say bye, Mom. My love. Oh, we'll look after her. I know. Bye. Come around here, guys, and take a look at that. Back at the Richmond practice, Eva, Adam and their son Jakob are finding out the results of the x-rays on little Fifi's injured leg. So this is one bone or the other two bones? Two bones. The radius and the ulna are both in the forelimb, in the forearm, and they've both been broken. So it's an extreme fracture for just falling off a couch. But the thing is with these little dogs, they have really brittle bones and just a unfortunate fall can lead to a fracture like this. From little jump, she, she ended up with like proper broken leg. So, you know, no one expected this. So will, will the bandage be okay for it? Will it, will it be, be enough? enough? Unfortunately not, no. What you can see there is the muscles have contracted and we've got overlap of the fracture site. So this will heal very badly if it isn't fixed internally. So we're going to have to use a mixture of pins and plates, lots of hardware. It's basically a bit of DIY with a pulse, I'm afraid, for little mm -hmm. Fifi, but it does need to be done. Yeah. So your little dog needs surgery. It's needs no good, fixing. is it? OK, guys, well, I'll take care of your little fluff ball. And you guys head home and we'll see you a little bit later. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you My pleasure. Much. Bye, guys. Thank you. See bye ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye. We are really, really worried and I hope everything goes well. Fingers crossed. Good girl, we'll fix you up. Here we will. Hey? Here we will. Here's Luta. Oh. Okay, Luta. so she's got a little bump on her eye. So okay. we just need to have a check. At St. Margaret's, Nurse Sam is assisting Tina with the procedure on Luta, the African pygmy hedgehog. Hey, look at you. Hey. You can actually see the bump on her left eye while she's curled up. Bit pink in colour. We need to figure out if it's a growth or a cyst, and if it is a growth, how nasty that growth could be. Two months ago, a malignant tumour was removed from Luta's uterus, and Tina is now concerned the cancer may have spread. Okay. All right, let's quickly turn it on her back and we can do yeah. a quick scan. While we've got her under the general anaesthetic, we're going to quickly do a little ultrasound scan of her abdomen just to check that everything is all right following her previous surgery with us when we removed the tumour from her uterus. So basically, I'm looking for big nodules or circles or any large abnormalities, but at the moment, everything looks normal. Okay, let's get her cleaned up. At the moment, it's looking pretty good. I can't see anything abnormal. Now Tina is going to take a sample from the suspicious lump that's appeared on Luta's head. 
we're going to be sticking a needle into the bump to get some material to see if it's infectious, inflammatory, or if it possibly still could be cancer. Here we go. I'm hoping it's not connected at all and it's just a little bump and she's healthy otherwise, but the test will give us the answers. Look, there's fluid coming out of there. Okay, let's make a smear. I looked at the slides and the one slide, there wasn't much on there, which was good, but the second slide, unfortunately, did have a group of cells, which I'm not 100% sure what they are. And we're gonna send it to the lab for them to evaluate it, to let us know if it's something to worry about. I'm gonna pop her in here, in her little safe place. It Thank will be a so. tense few it's days okay. waiting for the pathology results. She's already hissing at me. Hi, honey. Luta will stay at the clinic a little longer, before she can hopefully go home later today. Okay. <laughs> She's quite grumpy. There we go. How did it happen? It's, it's almost too hard to believe. She fell off a sofa. What, and snapped both of the bones in her front leg? Yeah, and she fell onto the floor about a foot, and that's what's happened. Wow. Yeah. In Richmond, Fifi the Spoodle is being prepared for surgery to fix her badly fractured foreleg. Okay, with that dressing off, you can see just how floppy that leg is. Makes you wince, doesn't it? The forelimb of a dog, like the forearm of a person, has got two major bones in it, the radius and the ulna, and both of them help to splint and give stability to that limb. And in this case, we have both of them broken, so it's literally flapping in the breeze. It's horrific. Such a fine-limbed little thing, isn't she? So delicate. Mm. So we had to fix you right up. Assisting Scott with the surgery is his new vet, Phoebe, and nurse Nathan. OK. All right, so nice and gentle there. Her bones are really only the size of a chicken leg, so they can very easily break. And as a result, you need to take your time and get the best job possible. OK, everyone ready? Okay, and just be quite gentle just with the fracture. Yeah. Very clean break. Um, there's no fragments, it's just two ends of a bone. Just trying to encourage these two bits to go back together. These bones were overriding, and by overlapping like that, the muscles then contract. What that means for you as a surgeon is you need to stretch those muscles back out to get those two sides of the fracture site opposing again. At the moment, she's got a leg a little bit like the S-bend of a toilet. We need to give it stability. So what I'm doing right now is placing a pin into the cavity of the bone. So we're going to put a pin up and then push it back down into the bone at the bottom and that will put it in alignment and then I can go back and put a plate onto the radius. You should do it very delicately, Phoebe. I'm just going to push against you a little bit, OK? Um, we have to do it very gently because it can easily shatter the whole bone if mm. we're not careful. This is quite a nerve-wracking moment, placing the pin, because clearly Fifi's bones fracture easily and we're putting quite a decent amount of hardware on the inside of the bone, so we have to be very, very gentle. Oh, there you are. You're there. That's perfect, Phoebe. Just like that, all right? Once I'm able to stretch the muscles and get the two ends of the radius in our position, I then place the plate, and that's requiring drilling some holes, little pilot holes, and then screwing some little screws into that bone. I do two above and two below the fracture site and that gives really great stability and should mean that Fifi makes a full recovery. There we go. All right. It is now solid. Okay, so let's close up. So can I get some um, 3O monocryl, please, Nathan? This plate will remain inside Fifi's body for life, attached to that bone, and then the bone will form a callus it'll start sticking back together to itself and that will give stability in the long term. Okay. Oh, poor baby. Okay. 
Good girl. That's it. Fifi will be kept at the clinic and closely monitored overnight to make sure she's well enough to go home. Okay. Oh, that's it. Perfect. Just what you need. Oh, my sweetheart, you're okay. At St Margaret's, a concerned Beata has returned to be reunited with her beloved pygmy hedgehog. Hello. Hi, Hi. hello ladies. How, How is my tiny baby? Your baby's fine. She's in the consulting room. Are you ready to go see her? Of course. <laughs> Vet Tina has taken some samples from a suspicious lump on the little hedgehog's head, and they've been sent away for testing. I'm holding thumbs that these results come back perfectly normal. I'm not 100% sure. But we will find out, and we will do the best for, for Luther in the end. So she was a very brave girl today. We managed to get a sample from the mass. I've withdrawn as much fluid as possible, and I made a little slide, and I looked at mm. it on the microscope. One of the slides does have a cluster of cells mm. that I'm not sure what they are. I'm just going to send it to the lab to see what they think it is, and then we take it from there whether we need to watch it. We need to see if it's going to fill up with fluid again, and we need to redrain it, or possibly look at removing it. And the lab should give us our results in about a week or so, so I will give you those as soon as they're in. I don't want to think about the sample. You know, it's always you have to be very positive, and until it's... It, no, I don't think there is. No, there is no problem with her. I know. Bye. Daisy, Daisy, you're gonna be all right. The next day in St. Margaret's, Royston right. and Laura have made an emergency appointment for their very sick pug, Daisy. We noticed her a bit lethargic and she wasn't really herself. She was panting a lot, she started shaking. So it was sort of by early evening, we got more and more nervous because she's just not herself at all. Uh, so we need to get it sorted. Hello there, guys. Hi. Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. Hi, Hi, gorgeous. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, Dr. You all right? Well, not really well. This day is still not really well. Mm. Hello, Daisy. Mm. Looking very sad. Yes. Panting a little bit. So you're not comfortable, are you, baby? No. Mm. Not at all. All right. Well, we better get you in and have a look at you, hey? All right. Come on, then, team. In we go. Daisy is a very much loved part of the family of three other dogs and of course Royston and Laura. They're incredible clients, they're wonderful owners and they adore their animals. Well, let's have a little examination. I mean, the first thing I could feel is she's just like a hot water bottle, isn't she? Yeah. She's so warm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's why she's panting then and obviously a bit uncomfortable as well. So, okay, let me just have a feel of your tummy, my love. Stand up. Wow, yeah. So straight away I can feel just how tense her abdomen is, she's really bearing yeah. down, like as if she was about to give birth or pass yes. a big poo. Yeah. Exactly. But that's not been happening, exactly. has it? No. We thought it was a stomach problem in the beginning, like because she couldn't poo, but no. And let's just have a look at her back end then. So yeah, I can see it's a bit stained back there. And when was it that she last had a season? She had a season about six weeks ago. Yeah. So, so yeah. And is she drinking more than normal? Yeah, she's drinking a lot more than normal. Yeah. Daisy's been brought in with a potentially life-threatening condition that's called pyometra, which is basically an infection within the uterus. Unfortunately, we do need to perform surgery on her and remove this infected uterus. Well, we have to, I mean, it's the only way to get her well. Go ahead, you take the decision, we follow you. Pyometra can be life-threatening, it can make dogs really unwell, and sometimes they don't survive the anaesthetic or the surgery or even get to the vet practice. Now, I have complained and begged them to neuter their dog sooner. They know that. It's something they're very concerned about because Laura in the past, being from Colombia, had some bad experiences with vets, found it hard to trust them, and Royston as well, incredibly nervous about the dogs that he loves so much, worried about the anaesthetic, and will they wake up from it? So they have held off from doing a spay, but now unfortunately that has turned around to bite them because if an animal's spayed, they don't have a uterus, hence they can't have pyometra. 
there's been anaesthetic issues in the past, there's been concerns yeah. regarding how your dogs have been treated in the past that you've been so frightened of doing it. Yeah. But unfortunately, because of that fear, we're here right now, which is a real shame. Yeah. Yes. I've cancelled maybe two or three times the day before when she has to go for the operation to be spayed. Just through nerves. I get nervous like weeks ahead of the time. And I know that you guys are super yes. worried. I know that's the reason why we've yes. been unable to get you in the building to do it, but it is something we desperately need to do, and now she actually feels unwell. Yes, definitely. Come on then, I know you love them very much. I just need to remove that excess baggage is what I need to do, yes. Say bye, mummy. Bye, Michael. We'll see you later on. See you later. Bye. We are worried, but we, in the same way, we think it's Yeah, it's it makes fine. me slightly less worried. Yes, yes, In Scott's yes. hands. Yes. Um, but still very worried. Yeah. Very worried. Sort you out, don't we, okay? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Phoebe's next patients aren't at any of the clinics. They're out on the streets of London. Today I'm off to the Strand in central London to help out with a charity called Dogs on the Street, run by a lovely lady called Michelle. Stands out. Really looking forward to it. Oh, we've got a visitor. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Nice to meet you. Hi. Thanks so much for coming along today. No problem. This is where. You're going to be today. Okay. Can't wait to get started. All right, let's get the yeah. tables out. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Dogs on the Street is a not-for-profit, voluntary-run service providing free vet care, training, grooming, all the essentials for the homeless community with their dogs that live out on the streets in central London. We're here with a team of vets, vet nurses, a trainer, grooming van, and also volunteers. So that when they come along, everything's there for them to access. Hiya. How are you? How are you? You all right? I've come to see you for Fizz. Hello, Fizz. Phoebe's first and client is Michael number with 15-year-old Fizz. I'm not really sure what to expect. I've never done anything like this before, and it's really different to private practice. You were here a couple of weeks ago, is yes. that right? Yes, yes. These are very vulnerable people that have absolutely nothing and maybe it will be hard to see them not maybe able to care for their dogs in the way that they would like. I'm hoping that we'll be able to give them the best possible care today. Right, should we get her on the scales yes. then? On you get, Fizz. Come on then. Oh. About 24.5. So she's put on about 200 uh, oh. grams in a week. In a week? Oh. Oh. Their diet is so inconsistent. It's just basically what they're in, you know, they can actually get their hands on to, to feed. And, and again, the homeless people go without. They provide their dog more than they do themselves. The That's all I'm giving them on the dog chew. Is that every day? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So they have a lot of fat. Yeah. So if you were giving her that, then you need to give her less of her normal food. And I would say no human food if you can. The dogs are their life, you know, the dogs are their children, their family, they are the most loyal fur baby, as we call them, that they have. And, you know, the, the love goes so deep, it's so hard to describe. But, yeah, they just mean the world. Uh -huh. Hi, Gary, I'm right? Phoebe. Hi, Phoebe. Next nice up to meet is you. Gary yeah. with his Lola. best friend, Lola. Lola. Yeah. And how yeah. long have you had her? Five years now. Wow. Best five years of my life. Oh. Lola is my Staffordshire Bull Terrier. She was one year old, she was found abandoned in a flat. And I just moved into premises from the streets. I wanted the dog because the resettlement team thought it would help me settle. And uh, they went to Batsy with me and we chose Lola. And I've had her ever since. Yeah, I just love her. <laughs> in you come, Poppet. Come on, Lolly. Good girl. I haven't seen Lola before, so can you tell me a bit about her? She had the elbow dysplasia. Elbow was, dysplasia? That's what they said, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, at the um, Blue Cross. Mm. And, um... So that's why um, Dogs on the Street have been giving her hydrotherapy sessions? Yeah, she's been having hydrotherapy. She's got three more left. How many has she had already? Seven. She's had seven? Yeah. And how has she been doing? She likes it, but she'll only do it if she's got a tennis ball in her mouth. <laughs> Elbow dysplasia is basically an abnormality of the cartilage in the elbow joint, which means that it doesn't develop properly. 
Should we just see how she walks then? And then you can get fragments of bone falling off and secondary arthritic changes. So it's quite nasty and it's quite painful for the dogs. Can you just walk her just to the end and back yeah. a few times? Yeah. OK. So to examine Lola, I trotted her up and down to see if I could see any lameness in those front legs, but she was walking really well. <laughs> She's not limping at all, is she? No. Right then, Poppet. We'll have a little feel of those elbows as well. Yeah. That's right, Lol. Look at that. Yeah, she would have cried if you had done that really? a couple of months ago, yeah. Yeah, she's got a really good range of motion on that elbow joint. Yeah, she she's never not used painful to. at all. No, good girl. Seeing cases like Lola and Gary is what's so inspiring. He's helping her with her elbow dysplasia. She was the one who inspired him to get off the street in the first place because he wanted to do it for her. Oh, you want to see more? The scales weren't lying, Lola. <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> It's just another example of such a loving bond between an animal and their owner. And it's what inspires me as well to go into work every day because you just want to strengthen that bond and keep it alive for as long as possible. Good girl. No, it's not more treats. <laughs> She's food mad. Bye. Bye. Lolly, come on. <laughs> Good girl. Hey, Sam. You all right? Hello, how are you? Good. Daisy's not so great, though. Poor little thing. She's got pyometra. Oh, I mean, your Daisy. baby. That's not nice. Mm. So she feels like a little pug-shaped hot water bottle at the moment. So oh, she's just so... not well, are you, baby? At the St Margaret's practice, Scott and Nurse Sam are about to start surgery on sick pug Daisy. Molly, you're a much more bouncy little, little girl, aren't you? The little dog has an infected uterus and it's making her extremely unwell. I feel for Royston and Laura because they feel very, very guilty that they didn't heed my advice about neutering. Obviously, there's risks, but... Yeah, and also being a pug, as you know, there's, there's risks on top mm. of that. And then she's a sick pug, which is even worse. Daisy is not in the best place for surgery. She's panting, she has a fever, and also she's a pug, so she's not built for breathing very well. She's got a tiny little flat nose and a flat face. So all the issues associated with breathing in that breed, compounded by illness, means that this will be a risky anaesthetic. OK, sweetheart, we'll see you on the other side, yeah? Good girl. We very carefully and gently move forward, giving her the minimal amount of anaesthetic needed in order to knock her out. Spin around. There we go, sweetheart. Good. But seconds later, oh my God. Daisy's in trouble. Come on. Even despite our best efforts, she stops breathing. Can, Can you grab that drip bag and just bring it through? Vet nurse Lily has been called in as an extra pair of hands. Can I just put this under a tongue? Yeah. Despite all my tricks of the trade and then even some drugs, she still continues to not breathe. But what's then worse, her heart starts to slow down. Come on. Can you grab that drip bag and just bring it through? Should we get the monitor? Yeah, the and the monitor as well. At St Margaret's, five-year-old pug Daisy has crashed under anaesthetic. <sighs> Daisy was in trouble. She'd stopped breathing. And with her heart slowing, we needed to make some very smart decisions very quickly. Just get some adrenaline at the ready. Quick as you can, Sam. I asked for some adrenaline to get her heart beating stronger, and we give it to Daisy. Do you want to give us an IV? Yeah. Uh, SBO2 81, going upwards. OK, heart rate's much stronger now. Daisy's heart rate is responding well to the adrenaline. So, about one in five. But she's still not breathing. In a good position. Come on. There we go. That was her. That was her. That's her again. Yep. OK, that's good. OK, so just put her up to put her up to two. This is why anaesthetics are risky. This is why we want to do spays on healthy dogs, not sick ones. There we go. Her heart rate's nice and consistent now, so she just needs to breathe in that gas, and then we should be in a good position. Well, well done, everyone. She's back now. 
Gosh, she took a sweet time, didn't she? Mm -hmm. My heart was in my gut because it is like doing a procedure on someone's child. A uh, little Daisy here and uh, we nearly lost her. Yeah. It's almost where their concerns are realised. You know? Yeah. They were worried about an anaesthetic. Well, for the last five minutes, so have we. So. <laughs> Mm. I if I breathed in that time. <laughs> no. <laughs> My heart was down here. <laughs> Although, thankfully, Mum was beating at times. Shares was trying not to. Mm. That was too much. Too close. Too close. And for people that, you know, talked about how much they trust you and how much faith they have in you, and then that happens, oh, it's just... It's even worse. Daisy's breathing is now stabilised, and Scott can begin removing the infected uterus that's making her so sick. OK, the size of it. So that's her left horn is just engorged with pus. Normally, a uterus of this size would probably be about a little finger, and that is much bigger than my little finger. It's massive. And the sooner it's out, the better for this dog. She'll feel much better, and so will I. OK, I'm just going to snap the ovarian ligament now. OK, done. Sam, how's the dog doing? She's, uh, her heart's going well. That's what we like, isn't it, Daisy? I'm doing mega speedy surgery, because none of us want to be here as long, any longer than we have to be. And we both want to get her working up as soon as possible. So, mm. so there's a nasty uterus. Yep, sorry. That's OK. As soon as the uterus full of pus is removed, that's a massive relief on Daisy's system. She's no longer absorbing all the toxins that that pus is giving off. Here she comes. There we go. Now she breathes. Back to those huggy, abnormal breathing ways. <coughs> to see this pug make those lovely Huggy noises on recovery was music to my ears. Come on then, Trouble. Let's get you all snugly. Hey. Daisy will sleep off the anaesthetic and will hopefully be able to go home with owners okay. Royston and Laura later right. today. Two rules. Heart keeps beating and lungs keep breathing. Yeah, deal? Do you think she would take a little treat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Here you go. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Back in the centre of town, Phoebe is helping the Dogs on the Street charity give free vet checks to the homeless. <laughs> so you do notes on um, all your patients? Yes. Yeah, everyone has one of these. They have all the notes written on it. Let's go and get Gizmo then. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi. Hiya. Gizmo's come from his checkup for his stitches. His stitches? So he was castrated yes, then? Yes, he was, yeah. A couple of weeks ago now, was yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, he's really friendly. Phoebe's last client of the day is Francesca, with her one and a half year old staffy, Gizmo. Where did you get him from? He was rescued because he was badly ill treated. Oh, poor oh. thing. He was quite young when I got him, but he was very badly abused. He was very thin, very badly ill treated. And I went in and took him, and that was it. I love him to bits. Yeah, he's my little baby. He's the only man in my life. <laughs> my little dog. You can see his little wound there. It's looking really good. I'd had him done, because he is quite boisterous and hyperactive, so... He's come to have his stitches checked, just to make sure that they're dissolving in that properly. That's healing really nicely. Oh, good. Yeah, really happy with that. Yeah. It's holding closed. Yeah. It's not painful. It's not inflamed. And hopefully his hormones should settle down a bit now yeah. that he's been castrated. You'd never have guessed, by the way, that Gizmo bounced around the, uh, the tent that he'd had an operation two weeks previously. I think Francesca probably has a hard job keeping him still at times. You've got a lovely little dog here. I've fallen in love with him. He's stolen my heart. <laughs> Everybody loves him when he comes here. 
You can tell just by talking to the owners for a couple of minutes how much their animals mean to them. They're everything to each other. Some of these people could maybe go into accommodation, but they'd rather be on the street than give up their dogs. Right, thank you for your help. It was lovely bye to bye. meet you both. Say bye-bye, Gizmo. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> I've had such a good day helping out with dogs on the street. It was definitely more than a vet clinic, it was definitely a community. And you could tell that just by the fact that clients will come back week on week, even if their dogs aren't feeling unwell. Everyone has a bit of a chat. Yeah, it was really nice to see. Oh, that's great. I'll come back soon. Oh, that'd be lovely. We'd have you back anytime. Yeah. anytime. Phoebe was amazing, you know, being it's her first time out here, sort of engaging with the homeless community as well. I think she'd done great. Yeah, bye. She's showing off her breathing now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back to hug breathing yet again. Yeah. Some sort of broken vacuum cleaner. Daisy has fully recovered from the surgery to remove her infected uterus. You don't even know, do you? What you put us through, all that stress. Unaware of the drama during surgery, Royston and Laura have arrived to pick up their little girl. Since we left, I've been a bag of nerves, just waiting for the phone call. As far as I know, everything went well. I guess we'll find out when we speak to Scott. Hello. <laughs> oh, my Hi. Oh, my oh, my the main cause for her illness, which is that uterus full of pus, is now gone. But I'm very glad to have passed her back to you because she wasn't breathing initially when we gave her the anaesthetic. So the Concerns you had regarding the anaesthetic were valid, but then her heart started to slow down a little bit, got a little bit fluttery and hard to hear, so we had to treat her with emergency medication, but thankfully, very quickly, she came back round and uh, she's here to send home with you now. My heart just stops to think that it could have gone the other way, basically. It was a terrible thought. Yeah. But luckily, uh, she came through and we got our baby back, basically. Yes, yes, oh my <laughs> so it's, it's a relief, a good, big relief. Yes. Yes. Daisy will be kept on a course of antibiotics to make sure all infection is completely gone from her body, and then she should make a full recovery. Oh, bye, baby. Okay. All right. So See you later, thank guys. You so much, Doctor. Thank all right. You. Sleep well. You too. Thank all you. Right. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. See ya. Yes. Bye. bye. Sweetheart, how are you? Don't you look better? A day after surgery to fix Fifi's broken leg, the one-year-old Spoodle <laughs> is ready to go oh, home. That's a good girl. Look at that waggy tail. Hey. Oh, great girl. Upstairs, Adam and his son Jacob are anxious to see their little girl. I think everything went well, so let's see how she's feeling. Hello. Wow. <laughs> He's your little puppy. Oh, Fifi. The surgery went well, and so that's given the whole leg lovely stability. It will be quite a long road, however. She's going to have six weeks of uh, incarceration, so she'll be quite bored. Mm. I think it's best that she's in a, in a crate or a cage for that period of time. And, of course, no more couches. So we need to try and convince her not to get on couches anymore because we don't know what might happen. Hey, are you looking forward to taking her home? Yeah, did you miss her while she was away? Yeah. Although going home with Adam and Jakob, Fifi is definitely going to be catching up on all those cuddles she's missed. She has to do a lot of healing, a lot of very controlled rest before we re-X-ray. But hopefully at that point, I can go back and see her running around the hills of Richmond. Hopefully she'll be A-OK. -okay. Bye. Bye. You do not like it here. And I hope that your bump is okay, baby. Everything will be fine. And a week later, Hedgehog Luta's pathology results are back, and Beata and her daughter have come to hear the findings. Two minutes and then everything will be fine, you know. Yes. 
They're hoping a sample taken from a lump on Luta's face isn't cancerous. Hi, Hi. How are you? Yeah. Oh, hello, miss. Come, let's go through. OK. Come on. They've had to be very strong this last year. They've gone through a lot with Luta. She's come through a tumour being removed from her uterus and now a scary little bump that we were all worried about. All right, guys, we got some results back and that little bump that we drained has come back benign, which is good news, OK? It's not cancerous. Cool. OK. <laughs> so it's basically they've classified it as a cyst. So it's a structure that forms a little bit of fluid that builds up and we just need to keep an eye on it and we need to drain it if needs be. And if it does become a problem, then we can possibly discuss surgery. But if it's not bugging her at all, I see no reason to mm. remove it, OK? She's just amazing. Yeah. We really love her. I think we are lucky that we have her, whatever happened, that uh, we are lucky that she's still there and she is happy and healthy. She just she's going to sleep. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Luta. <laughs> she's really going to sleep. In Isleworth, Scott is making a very special house call. Well, hello, Hi. sir. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, good. Hello, Daisy. Hey, dog. Hello. So it's six weeks since Daisy was rushed into the clinic with a life-threatening condition. Oh, thank you. Oh, I know, to see the girl. Scott removed the little pug's infected uterus after a challenging anaesthetic. Thank you. So, she... Put us all through the ringer. How's she been since the surgery? Much better. Say hello to the doctor. <laughs> oh. Daisy, oh, come on, don't be rude. Don't do that. You're supposed to say thank you for saving my life. <laughs> she's run around more than before, so, so it's She's fantastic. got a, a, a new lease on life, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. Can I just have a little look at my handiwork there and just see how things are looking? Can I have a look at your tummy? Hey, oh, that's healed really nicely, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Doctor, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so, for so everything. Welcome. I know how much you guys love your dogs. And obviously, this was one of those instances where you've put off a decision to, to spay her because you were worried, and it actually made things a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. And now, the other two dogs, are we planning yes. on booking them in? Yes, definitely. definitely. 100%. Yeah. Both, both are going to get done. Um, thank you. I think for your sanity and for mine, Let's just get it done. Yeah, yes. For sure. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. They have to be done. Sound good? <laughs> no. Oh, Daisy. <laughs> be cool, Be cool, It's a very clear no. <laughs> no more surgery. Go away. Yes. Oh, my God, you are a grumpy yes. bugger. And two and a half months after emergency surgery to repair Fifi's broken leg, Scott wants to see how the little spoodle has recovered. Good evening. Hi, Hi. how are you? <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, Fifi. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Hey? Doing really well. Oh, good. And not minding the vet coming to visit at home. No, hey? she's so happy. <laughs> very friendly girl. All right, well, let's go in and chat, shall we? No come worries. Come in. Cheers. Please come in. So, it's an extreme fracture for just falling off a couch. Scott had to insert a pin and a metal plate to fix the nasty break, and prescribed plenty of rest to give the fracture time to heal. And so how's the 10 weeks gone for you? It's been hard, I'm sure, for Fifi. The beginning part was probably, you know, the, the hardest because she had the plaster on, so it was difficult for her to even lie down. Mm -hmm. When we took the plaster off, after two weeks, she started putting pressure on her on her leg, and um, she was even happy to run. Wow. Um, so she's been really strong and really good. Well, first thing I noticed when I walked in the door is you can really not tell which leg it is, which is incredible, no, isn't it? Yeah. With her now fully recovered, is she back to sort of her usual jumpy, happy, bouncy self, playing with the kids? When we go for walks, when she come back, she comes and jump on the sofa and just sleep. Oh dear, you've put mummy in it there. Jumping on the sofa? No, we can't be doing that. In fact, I've got something to try and stop that from happening. Oi, oi, oi. Do not cross, <laughs> Fifi. You like it? Do not cross. 
<laughs> she loves it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got authority, have I, really? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> ah! I'm sorry, I can't stop it. No. Oh. You're just saying thank you for the yes. operation. <laughs> Very enthusiastic, thank you. Oh. Luckily, I'm better at fixing legs than I am at dog training, hey? Yeah. No. Yes. I, I, I'm thank glad you that so she can, much. She can use her foot to sort of hook onto me while she's licking me to death. Hey. Yes. See? Yes. You're a very good girl. Your legs fixed and your tongue was never broken, was it? Hey? <laughs> Going to the vets. Scott's first patient is British Bulldog Daisy. Good girl, Daisy. She's heading into the Richmond practice with her besotted owner, Helena. Daisy's been with me eight years. The bond's just amazing. Like, she's my best friend. Like, she's there for me. When I open the door, she's there running up to me, cuddling me. Like, boys can come and go, but Daisy's still always there. She really is my best friend. And like, a family member, I suppose. She's like my child. Uh, not this one. The wrong door. Hi, Helena. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you very much. Hi, Daisy. Hello. Hello. Oh, why's got such a grumpy face? <laughs> She's like, I recognise you. Yeah. Daisy's not really a fan of the vets. She's quite a grumpy bulldog. So when it comes to like prodding her and poking her, if she's not in the mood, she just won't let you. And what's she in for today? Um, she started to have like tremors, her head shakes. Okay. Right. And um, I've got a video as well to show you. Okay. Um, of her doing it. She's done it like four times now. Okay. In the last two weeks, just randomly, her head will shake really fast, but for around about five or ten seconds. And I literally just grabbed her chin because I thought maybe she's having a fit or something. But it was quite hard to see when you can't do anything for your dog. Okay, well, let's go into the concert room and uh, have a look at the video. Okay, yeah. perfect. Come on then, gorgeous. Come in you on. come. Obviously, eight years is a long time for me to have a dog, and it's always just been me and Daisy. So it's a little bit nerve wracking to know what's actually wrong with her. Okay, let's have a little look at this then, shall we? Oh, wow. It's quite significant, isn't it? Yeah, it's really fast. And then I can see she just, her eyes just blinking a little bit, sort of what we call muscle fasciculation, so little sort of tremors around the muscles of the face alongside this head bobbing. <laughs> and I can hear her snoring. <laughs> she goes straight back to sleep. And that's the thing, it's not hurting her or anything. Yeah. I mean, you would be inhuman not to be worried about that. Yeah. You know, that's a, a strange movement. Yeah, yeah, that's quite worrying. Any dog owner knows that when their dog's asleep, they can make some funny movements and basically dreaming. But in this case, it was much more sinister looking. It was a real shudder. And the fact that this is coming and going, not only when she's asleep, but when she's awake as well, is quite worrying. And generally, is she a healthy girl, eating well, drinking oh, she normally? she loves her food. Yeah. I've noticed she's drinking a lot more. Okay, So that, that could be playing a role. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah. Is kidneys something to worry about? Um, it's not a great symptom okay. um, if she has kidney disease. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something we need to look into. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Look at me. <laughs> no, you're all right. She's your little girl, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Renal disease or kidney disease can sometimes lead to symptoms like head tremor in dogs. And poor Helena, well, obviously, she's understandably shocked. She clearly adores this dog, and it's not something that any owner wants to contemplate. It is something that is seen in other British Bulldogs, that they just have yeah. this little bit of a, a head tremor. Yeah. And what we need to do is to diagnose based on exclusion. So we have to rule out a whole bunch of really frightening, really horrible things. And by the time we get to the end, what's left is idiopathic head tremor. But obviously at the other end of the scale is the possibility that she could have a tumour in her brain. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to end up needing to do is to um, sedate her in order to take the blood, which okay. we need to, to just check her general health. 
and also to look into uh, why she is maybe drinking a little bit more than normal. Yeah. What we'll also be doing is then X-raying her head and her, um, basically her spine, just to see if there's any abnormalities, anything that could lead to the symptoms that you're seeing. Okay, right. perfect, thank you. All right then, you say goodbye to mummy, all right? Bye, thank you. We're gonna go on our little journey of discovery together, aren't we? Yes, we are, yeah. It's really hard to leave her behind. It's horrible to leave what I class as my baby behind. We have that connection, so it's hard. I don't want nothing bad to happen to her, but we'll just wait and see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess she's still learning how to play, isn't she? She doesn't yeah, really know. She's not quite grasped it yet. No. She'll get there. In a nearby park in St. Margaret's, Scott's vet nurse Reagan and her partner Russell are trying to encourage their newly adopted dog Shiloh to play. Go, Shiloh. Fetch. Go. My grandmother actually sort of posted something on Facebook for a rescue centre. I always wanted to rescue, and I just feel really strongly about adopting. And seeing her picture just come up, like she does have such a foxy little face, and that did instantly draw me to her. And I literally showed it to you straight away, didn't I? And I was like, that's that one, definitely. Um, yeah, unbelievable. One. I haven't seen anything like her before, so yeah, she's one of a kind. Shiloh! The shy little pup has had quite a journey to her new home. She was saved by Flory's Friends, an organisation that rescues neglected and abused dogs and cats in Romania and brings them to the UK for rehoming. Come. Good girl. Good girl, can you sit? Good girl. Dogs in Romania do go through a bit of a hard time. I know that she was taken off the streets and put into something that they call a kill unit. I believe they just round them up and sort of dispose of them, really. That feel nice. Living the high life now. At first, you could tell she was just scared of everything. Like, you take her out for a walk, she'd just lay down when she saw people, tail between her legs, literally scared of the world. But now she's slowly coming out of her shell, like happy around people, tails wagging. Keep on, baby. She's completely stolen my heart. She's just so beautiful and just so kind and gentle, and I know that she's got a really good soul. She's doing so well, I'm so pleased. Yeah. That's how she's doing. Perfect. Oh, and today, little Shiloh has another adventure in store. Reagan is taking her into the Isleworth practice for her very first checkup. Hey, baby. You're the best girl. Left a bit, left a bit, left a bit, left a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a spot. There we go. Okay. You're a big flirt, aren't you? Hey? Oh dear, as soon as mummy's out of the room, <laughs> butter wouldn't melt, eh? Hey? It's like x ray me, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the Richmond Hill practice, Scott and vet nurse Jess have just sedated English bulldog Daisy. Well, she's got his head tremor, so she's got a, a strange sort of mm. up and down shake of her head, which is quite concerning, happened uh, quite a few times over the last month. Oh, Daisy. Head tremors can be caused by a variety of things, but Daisy's owner has just said that she's been drinking a lot of water lately, and that makes me think about kidney disease, which can be deadly. So straight away, we can hopefully roll that out by testing Daisy's blood and urine. Oh, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. Go from there. Hey. Mm -hmm. Wasn't lying about your snoring, was she? <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Yes. Upstairs, Daisy's owner Helena is hoping it's not bad news. I think your head goes through so many different things of all the worst possibilities, but I don't know, I just think I've just got to think positive. Right, let's have a look at these bloods then. That's all looking pretty good. So our kidneys are fine. Just fine, which is which is yeah. really great. Yeah. It's a relief. Let's just check the urine test that we did as well. Great. Yeah, I mean she looks like generally a very healthy dog, so 
So far, so good. Keep it up, Daisy. Yeah, exactly. It's great news, Daisy's kidneys are fully functioning, but she's not in the clear yet. The next step is to take some x-rays. X-ray. To see if there's anything wrong with Daisy's skull and spine, any abnormalities, any pressure that's being applied to her spinal cord that might be causing these head shakes. Just having a little look around her head. So far, so good. There isn't any obvious changes. The start of the cervical vertebrae in the neck, I can see, and they're all looking normal. It still, however, does leave the possibility that it could be within her brain, something that we can't see on an X-ray like this. With all the tests complete, Daisy's beginning to wake up from her sedation, and it's time to reunite this lovely bulldog with her beloved Helena and give her the good news. But unfortunately, I can't rule out all the bad things just yet. All right there. Can you hear mummy? Where's mummy? Where is she? Daisy. Daisy. Who's that? Daisy, look, who's that? Hello, <laughs> hello princess. Hello, mummy. Hey. Hello. So, lots of information gained today. Oh, really? All right. But one bit of news that I know that you'll like is that she doesn't have kidney disease. <laughs> thank you. So, I don't want to kiss you, but I'm not going to do it. Well, we can you. hug. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you're you. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So then after some tummy rubs and some x-rays, I've not found any cause for the tremors. So there's nothing that is of concern as yet that I can see. The only thing left really is the possibility of there being something within her brain. Okay. So either inflammatory diseases, um, swelling, or worst case scenario, a tumour. Yeah, I know, yeah. So we need to send you off to the Royal Veterinary College. She needs to get an MRI done. That will look into her brain and see exactly what's going on. And if there is any negatives to find, they'll find it. Okay. Just keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. You gonna get up? Hey, should we go? Home. No. You wanna come? Come on, Nan. And Helena, I really hope that we're gonna get good news from the RBC, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right Thank then. You. Come on, Daisy. Bye, girls. Bye, gorgeous. Bye. Good girl. Vet nurse Reagan has arrived at the Isleworth Clinic with Shiloh for the little rescue pup's first health check. Hello. Hi. Oh, this must be Shiloh. This is Shiloh. Lessa. Yes. Oh, look, she's oh, already she's waiting for a drink. <laughs> oh my god. My god. Hello, sweetie pie. <laughs> she's so beautiful. I know. She is really amazing, isn't she? It's the first time receptionist Lizzie and vet nurse Lily have met Reagan's new pup. I didn't expect her to be so confident. I know, she's done really well with people. She was very nervous at first, but she still is now, but definitely getting better. Mm. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Good girl, baby. Good girl. Hey. Hi. Hi. Oh, is this your new little puppy? This is Shiloh, yes. Hello, I've heard so much about you. Shiloh is booked in for an appointment with vet Phoebe. So I just wanted to bring her in and get her checked over, make sure everything's all OK. Shiloh's got an amazing story. And then this is the point at which hopefully her whole life turns around. She goes from being a dog on the street to a dog in a loving home with a, with a vet nurse as a mother. So she'll definitely get the best care. I'll start with the head end and I'll work down. <laughs> She's made herself at home on the table, hasn't she? She's pretty comfy, yeah. I don't think she minds too much. Let's have a look in your mouth. Yeah, teeth look good, no gingivitis or anything. There's a tiny little bit of tartar on there, but not much at all. Good. Let's have a little listen to your chest, pop it. <laughs> She's really good. She does have all these lumps on her head. I was informed that it was because of a dog bite while she was in her kennels when she was in Romania. There's this big one here. There's one there. There's one There's um, one just at the front, I there's think. There's one, oh yeah, there's one here. In some places it even looks like scar tissue. Mm. Yeah, it's like growing over the fur there, so it's mm. a little bit strange looking. Mm. All right, baby. I think they look like cysts, oh. um, little follicular cysts. 
So that does fit with a history of trauma. Sometimes it can bring on these things. Okay. I think they're unlikely to go away on their own, though. But if we did take them off, it would be quite a straightforward operation. She'd need a full general anaesthetic, but she's young and otherwise healthy, so I can't, I can't see why she would be at high risk or anything like that. So what's your verdict, then? Regan, she's in really good health. Good. Yeah, she, she's really good. It's just these tiny little cysts. Um, on her head and I think you just need to have a little think about what you really want to do with them. I don't think there's any rush. Okay. The only thing that I'm worried about really is if she catches it while scratching or if she's playing with another dog and they scratch it, could cause an infection, make them quite inflamed and just more problems really than they are now. So I'm just deciding whether or not I want to go ahead with the surgery sooner or wait for a little bit. You've been very good today. Haven't you? <laughs> I'm very pleased with her, yeah, so yeah. got to get her home now and carry on with the rest of the day. Hey, Shiloh. Hey. Scott's now heading two hours north of London to answer an emergency call from the Leicestershire Wildlife Hospital. I'm really excited today because, of course, at my London practices, I'm generally working with domestic animals. So when I get the opportunity to work with wildlife, I jump at the chance. Well, hello there. You must be Angie. Hi, Scott. Oh, I'm Scott. How Hi, are you? Scott. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Very good. Angie set up the rescue centre 30 years ago, and it's currently home to 500 animals in need. We've got swans, badgers, foxes, mainly hedgehogs as well at this time of year. OK. And then talking of hedgehogs, we've got a poorly one, if you could have a look at it for me while you're here. Wow. You didn't take long to put me to work, did you? I didn't. Come on in. <laughs> Come right, and have a seat. Go. Crack the whip. Hi, Harriet. This is Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. You? Hi. Hi, I'm shaking hands with you yes, as you're supposed to be yes. holding on to your patient. Yeah, bless. So this is the emergency. Um, okay. It came in literally uh, a couple of hours ago. She's actually got quite a swollen mouth. That is nasty looking at a really swollen, ulcerated yes. tongue. Yeah. Scott arrived just at the critical moment for the hedgehog. She's very, very dehydrated, um, very skinny. The person that dropped the animal off, do they have any idea what...? Uh, no, they were just driving past, seeing it on the side of the road. Um, in the daytime, obviously, they're, they're not supposed to be out in the day and no. picked her up and brought her in. This little hedgehog, she's clearly unwell. She's got a really swollen, ulcerated tongue and her mouth just looks so painful. I don't know if it's just going to pop out or not. Right. So that tooth is moving there. That molar is actually loose, oh, so yeah, I, can see it. I don't know if it's what she's eaten has then weakened the gums around yeah. it, but uh, that's where this muck is coming from, is from that tooth. Not only does she have a huge amount of sort of bloody, pussy discharge, but finally I can find the root of the problem, which is a tooth root abscess. I'm just going to see if I can go underneath the tongue if she'll let me. There we go. Out it comes. Oh, wow. There it is. Look. The poor thing. Oh, baby girl. The hedgehog's gums are so badly inflamed that the tooth comes out easily. That is going to make all the difference in the world because that would have been painful, but obviously would have been a site for infection. Yeah. So I think now we've got And obviously got that if out. you managed to clear it up as well because it was still in there, you could obviously get another infection. Yeah, that's it. I just think when you've got a tongue that sore, yes. you're not going to eat. No, no, definitely not. And therefore you're going to get dehydrated yes. and yeah. anorexic very quickly, so... I think you might just need a little bit of fluid under your skin, sweetheart. She just needs some hydration. She's very dehydrated after her time not eating and some antibiotics to start knocking off the infection. She's not giving up any fight at all, is she? She's no, bless her. So flat. Hopefully it'll make her feel better, though. So now that I've treated my patient and mm -hmm. I'm just about to give some medication, I think she deserves a name, don't you? Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. what... What sort of thing would you would you like to name us? And you've you know. I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, uh, like a good English name, I think. Like maybe like a like what about English Hattie name. the Hedgehog? Hattie the Hedgehog. Yep, I right? agree with that. Yeah, if you want Hattie the Hedgehog, you can quite happily oh, have a Hattie. Bless you. Thank you. Hattie. Hattie is a really unwell hedgehog right now, but what she needs is lots of love and attention and lots of treatment. So hopefully by being here now at the hospital, she'll be able to get all of that treatment and hopefully make a full recovery. All right, gorgeous. You feel well soon. Toothache really is quite painful, isn't it? There you go. All right, get nice and snuggly. 
All right, to our next patient. Yes, fab, thank you very much. Yeah. So I've got another little something to show you. Okay, um, all right. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> With hundreds of animals in care at the sanctuary, feeding time is especially demanding. Oh, my word. So every spare set of helping hands is put to work. Hello, beautiful. Hello. Oh, wow. The two bunnies that we've got in at the moment came off a building site. The foreman brought them in uh, after seeing uh, a digger dig them up. So they're being hand-fed by me. So lots of hours going in there, lots of sleepless nights. I was hoping that you could help me feed them. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. Absolutely love to. As a dad of three, ah, I'm used to giving babies milk. Experience then. Yeah. Just need to check, obviously, that it's not yeah. too warm, mm -hmm. which is fine. Yeah. So if you want to take that one. Hello. You hungry? Mm -hmm. Hey, this job just never gets old, does it? No, no, especially, yeah, when the babies come in, it's lovely. Mm, you definitely got the wriggle off. Yeah. Yours just staying there. Yeah. Eh? Maybe it's just the experienced touch. Eh? He knows if he wiggles, you don't get that much. <laughs> Look at us like proud parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Harriet's demonstrating such a massive dedication to her job. She's getting up to these little kits every three to four hours throughout the day and night, making sure that they're given all the milk they need to sustain their body weight and hopefully get to the point where they'll be able to be released back into the wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mine's finished, is. Aww. Is that all of it? It's not a race. No, well, I won. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. Daisy. Just north of London, Helena has arrived at the Royal Veterinary College, hoping for answers as to why Daisy is experiencing head tremors. So Daisy's having an MRI scan. We're just going to check, see whether there's anything in there, like a tumour or anything like that. Mm -hmm. In, 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 in. Yeah, good. To be honest, it's only just hit me as I walked in. I think you put it at the back of your mind else you just go mad thinking, what could it be? Scott has already ruled out kidney disease or a spinal problem as possible causes of Daisy's head tremors. So the MRI will now be focusing on her brain. I'm hoping the best results come and she's fine and we can go home, but I don't know, I'm a little bit. Specialist Elsa Beltran is looking closely for any abnormalities. At the moment, nothing. Hello, good evening. So Daisy is recovering from anesthesia. She's doing very well, so we can come in and then we have a chat of the findings that we uh, have found on the MRI. Okay, it's okay? perfect. Good. Thank you. So we just go this into the way again. Yeah. We don't have anything in the brain to be worried about regarding the head bobbing. So at this stage, everything looks very good. So there's nothing to worry about? Nothing to worry about. So good things. <laughs> That's okay. good. So, if you have any, any problem at any time, you give me a call, you send an email, and I'm Thank and you, I'm yeah. And there she is. <laughs> 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 Hi, Daisy. Hi, <laughs> That is the best feeling ever. It's been so stressful the last couple of weeks just not knowing. So to hear that's really good. Let's go home. Yeah. Good girl. The next step for Helena is to discuss the RVC findings with Scott. Daisy, come on. Yay! Yeah. Let's go home. So you've seen some of our nicer animals now. Yeah. Now I've got something more on the feisty side to show you. Uh, oh. That needs a quick check over. Okay. Sounds ominous. Yeah. At the Leicestershire Wildlife Hospital, Jack, the bird life carer, has an unusual patient for Scott to meet. Wow, so it's a kestrel. Yes, it is, yes. Oh, my goodness. He is an absolute stunner, isn't he? Yeah, he's very lovely, yeah. But he's quite feisty as well. Well, I can imagine. They're those birds that when you're driving up motorways in the UK, you always see them sort of stalking their prey, kind of hovering above. You're thinking that vole better run pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. the ones that hover, yeah. So why is he here at the hospital? So a gentleman just found him out walking his dog, kind of just 
in the middle of a field on the ground and he, he wouldn't fly off. Um, okay. So the gentleman brought him into us and he's now just checking the wings are okay again and hopefully test flying him if everything's okay. So I suppose we uh, have to catch him. Yeah, best get him out. Yeah. I think you're the experienced one here. I, I think you should go for it, mate. Yeah. I'll, I'll take one for the team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect, putting that little tail on his head, just like a hood for any raptor just calms yes. him down. Darkness and peace. Okay. Yeah. Which wing was the one uh, that you think is working? Right wing that he right. seemed to, okay. to use as well. Wow. This is literally the first time I've ever got to open a Kestrel's wing. Oh, it's really? uh, oh. such a privilege, isn't it? Yeah, it's not many people get the chance to hold a Kestrel, let alone yeah. touch one. In. The good news is that I can't feel any fractures, any broken bones. Yeah anywhere in the wing, which is great and backs up what you guys thought. One thing I can see, however, is that right at the end, this little flight feather here, the primary flight feather, is actually damaged there. And it's a little bit kinked, and I think that was probably sustained maybe with trauma. So the birds come down as a result of that, and then maybe he's just got out of the habit of flying. Flight feathers are obviously very important to allow a bird to twist and turn in the air, but also to lift off the ground. So for this bird to have a sudden change in the way that it, its wing works, I would suggest that's the reason why it's come to the ground and then not wanted to fly off again. I just want to have a feel now of his pectoral muscles, his, his chest muscles, because what sometimes happens in birds when they're not using their wings properly is that one peck will be well, a little bit flat, and the other one's nice and solid. So I just want to see how they feel here on him. Again, it's good news. His keel bone, the breastbone, isn't particularly sharp. He's got good musculature. He's got a nice muscly chest for a bloke. Yeah. And both of the pecs are equal. So I think that this is an acute injury. I don't think he's had this loss of flight for very long. And I'd hope that just a bit of rest and TLC with you guys should be enough to have him flying again. Obviously, the trial flight is a difficult one. Have you got somewhere we can maybe try and yeah, yeah, see we what have we can a, do? Avery where we can test fly him in and see how he gets okay. along. It's very important that the Kestrel's wings work into 100%. It's essential for its life in the wild that it's fully functional. Um, without it, it'd be grounded and it won't be able to hunt or survive for food. All right, little man, let's see what you can do. Hey! Look at him go! Hey! That's brilliant! Yeah, much better than uh, when he originally came in. This is a healthy bird. He's flying, he's flapping around the cage, he's moving very well. Oh, he's doing great. I mean, he's still flying a little bit off kilter, I think, with that flight feather being damaged, but hopefully he'll get used to that in time and be able to be, more well, certainly go into a larger aviary, maybe? Yeah, definitely. So his next step now that he is flying, he will go into one of our aviaries to build up more of his strength. And once he's ready, he'll be released back where he's from. It's a much better result than we ever could have thought. Um, so fingers crossed he won't be with us for too much longer, um, even though when we're seeing him around. Next day, Scott is back from Leicestershire and is visiting Helena and Daisy to discuss the bulldog's diagnosis. Oh, someone's home. Hello, how are you? Hello, baby girl, how are you? We've got some MRI results to discuss, don't we? Yes, we do, yes, we do. Fingers crossed it's the final sign-off and Daisy hopefully won't be visiting the vets too much more. The report is all good news, as you know. It's good news, what are you growling for? It's all good news. In that um, these head tremors are classed as idiopathic, which just means of unknown cause. So, you know, this bobbing, rather than thinking that it's some sort of condition that we should be really concerned about, yeah. instead now you can just say it's a very cute little quirk yeah, that exactly. Daisy's got. One little bit of homework that I'm asking Helena to do with Daisy is to keep a diary and anytime she sees any of these tremors, these head bobs, to just write it down how long it went on for and if Daisy was okay afterwards. And also, I'd like to just try to interrupt the behaviour because if she can stop the bobs by getting Daisy's attention, then clearly that is not a seizure and there's nothing to worry about. 
maybe we can interrupt it with a tummy rub. Yeah. Because we know how so much you love those, don't we? <laughs> hey, just don't stop. Hey, just don't stop. <laughs> it was clear from the outset how much Helena loves Daisy. These girls are bonded. She absolutely adores her. She wants the best for her. And that's why we've gone through this whole process to make sure that these concerning symptoms are nothing to worry about. You just kiss them to say yeah. thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Hmm? But we might have to do something about that breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her. Good girl. Good girl. In Richmond, Nurse Reagan is bringing Shiloh in to see Scott after the little rescue dog developed a problem with the cysts on her head. She scratched her head um, and it made one of them bleed quite badly. So I just want Scott to take a look at it and, and give his opinion. So I was told that um, she was bitten by a dog when she was in the shelter, once she'd been rescued over in Romania. And they were just cysts that had come from that dog bite. Has there been any other symptoms at all? Has she been unwell? Has she had a fever? No, she's absolutely fine eating normally, going to the toilet normally. There's no other problems, so okay. it seems like it's just in that area. Yeah, yeah. And did they actually see and treat the dog bite or are they just guessing that it was? I had a picture sent of when she did get bitten and her head was really swollen. So clearly they were there right when it happened and they did treat okay. her straight away. That's good um, because one of the problems we see in rescued street dogs uh, in Europe is a condition known as leishmania. Mm -hmm. um, you might have heard of leishmania. It's a protozoan disease and it's spread by sand flies. Now normally in Romania, uh, they don't have a huge amount of beaches or sand flies, so it's not normally a problem, but they have started to see migration of the sand flies and they have seen some cases. Okay. <laughs> it's not great if they get it. Leishmania causes a whole bunch of different clinical symptoms. Mostly it starts as skin lesions, so scabbing lesions around the head or the face, which is why I'm concerned for Charlotte. It can also lead to lameness, it can cause fever, it can cause all sorts of symptoms, but it's a lifelong debilitating condition that has no cure. Um, and it can have ramifications for the rest of their life. I'm sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, when I worked in Portugal, I saw a lot of street dogs and they show symptoms like this and leash mania is very common in Portugal. Didn't expect that. Just thought we were going to remove the cysts and then she was just going to carry on as normal. But um, now this has sort of come into the picture, it's sort of thrown me everywhere. Today, what I think we need to do is to give her an anaesthetic, clip her head. Yeah and have a look at these lesions and see what we can do about them. And then we'll take some bloods. We'll likely send some of the skin lesions off as well to the lab and we'll prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jess. Good morning. Hello. So have you met Charlotte before? I have. Hello, baby. How are you Cheers. doing? Reagan will be an observer during the surgery and Nurse Jess will be assisting. Even though it's nerve-wracking because it's my own animal, I'm just really trying to stay positive and keep our fingers crossed. If it was a dog bite, it must have been a horrific one. Yeah. It's incredible sort of what lies beneath the fur. Looking at these lesions, straight away you think, a dog bite? Really? A nodular sort of dark pigmentation also is something that's um, a little bit concerning. But what we have to be careful of is as soon as we take some away, we're putting tension on the skin and our eyes just there. Yeah. So what we don't want to do is irreparably change the appearance of, of your dog's face. No. Okay, so just cutting now, Jess. What I want to do first is just investigate one of these nodules. Mm -hmm. Is that what was underneath the skin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, That's... I think I know what this is. I bet you can't guess what's going what, to be in What? Here. Don't. What? Look. Is that what was underneath the skin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, That's... I think I know what this is. 
In Richmond, Scott has just discovered the reason for the nasty lumps on rescue dog Shiloh's head. I bet you can't guess what's going to be in what? here. What? Don't. What? Look. It's hair. <gasps> OK. Is this a good thing? It's a very good thing. <laughs> OK. So what's happened is, is during the bite, the hair has been bitten into the wound and then the wound is healed over. So all of these lumps and bumps is hair. Look. Oh my God. Oh. It's gross cool, that is. That's gross cool. <laughs> so that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. God, there's so much of it though. That's like a really vast like, area. Mm. So I'll have to mine into every single bit of it. The discovery of the hair means Shiloh does not have the potentially fatal disease leishmania. I can't actually tell you the relief that I feel right now. Um, it's like the best news I could possibly have wanted. So you can see them, so they're all dotted in that. So there's more hair, more hair, more hair, more hair. It's just like, just gross. Hairy little mutant babies all through the dog's head. Uh, uh. But that is, Look at that's that. made me feel Look. a lot better. Some of those little hairy volcanoes. Now out, there you go. So you can really see them there, Reagan. They're unbelievable. So there's, you know, there's one there, there's there. Just all the way through, all those black dots. Like I can feel a big one in there. So if we just cut over that. Ugh. Oh my God. Oh, a big one. Oh, yeah. that's horrible. Mm. This isn't something you see very often at all, and not to this extent. However disgusting, it's good news, and I can remove it. Happy days. And then we'll zip her up, and she'll look like a real rock chick, won't she? Yeah. Mm. And that, ladies, is that. All those nasty little hair volcanoes <laughs> out of your gorgeous dog's head yeah. and she can wake up. Baby. Hi Shiloh. Hello. Mm. Hi. Now the surgery is completed, Shiloh is allowed to recover and she does that very gently and now it's time for her to have lots of cuddles and lots of reassurance from loving Reagan. So while you continue to rest, you get back to work. We've got a busy day, lots of patients to look after, so uh, that theatre won't scrub itself. <laughs> OK. Off you go. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Come on, then. Scott is answering another call from the Leicestershire Wildlife Hospital, this time to check up on a swan called Lucky. So the famous Lucky's in here? Yeah, he's just in here, yeah. Yeah. Lucky came here at just three weeks old when he was found with a shocking crossbow injury to his head. Lucky was in a terrible state when he came in. It was so traumatic. We weren't too sure whether Lucky would pull through or not. It was really sickening just to think that someone could be so cruel and do that to such an innocent baby animal. Miraculously, Lucky survived and has been nursed back to health. When I see animals treated with such cruelty, it angers me to my very core. It just drives home the importance of the wildlife warriors like the people here at the Leicestershire Wildlife Hospital. If it wasn't for them, animals like Lucky that are treated so badly just wouldn't have survived. Lucky is now a year old, and after spending almost all of his young life in care, he's hopefully recovered well enough to be released. But first, Scott has to give him the all clear. I must admit, I am not a swan wrangling expert. Yeah. <laughs> so um, can you just give me a little bit of advice on how I should be trying to scoop up yeah. young Lucky? So we'll try and round him up, and then mm -hmm. usually if you can get them round, grab the base of their neck, okay. and then... Um, We'll keep the wings close to the body so he can't flap. OK. Just watch out for the feet because their claws are quite sharp. Right, OK, so watch yeah. out for feet. I'm yeah. assuming the beak. Yeah, and wings. Um, and wings. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's quite dangerous, this whole swan yeah. wrangling malarkey, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Feeling a little bit nervous. <laughs> OK, Lucky, be nice. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right, sweetheart. Wow. Okay. Ooh, wow. Large, aren't you? Ooh. Wow. It's stunning, isn't it? And surprisingly, you can't even see a hole. No, no, there's a slight indentation in his skin, but with the feathers covering it, you, you can't see it. Yeah. Having a look at Lucky's beautiful face and head, you'd never know that he'd been shot with a crossbow through his head, but I can feel the indentation and you can feel how close it went to his cranium, which is the bony structure around his brain and a little bit further forward. And this one wouldn't be here today. That must have missed his cranium by millimetres. Yeah, it was at a millimetre that it missed him his wow. school by, so yeah, he's very wow. lucky. Hence the name. Wow, well, I mean, that seems to have healed really well. No problems there whatsoever, and all the feathers are covering in what is that rather impressive dent in his head. But the foot is what you're concerned about, isn't it? Yes, yes, so it's just this foot. Oh, here. right, I see, here, yeah. Look, he came in with a slight swelling on his right leg and it's kind of stayed there. It's never really got worse, um, but it's just something we wanted checked out before he's released to make sure it's not going to hinder him when he's in the wild. There's that swelling on the right leg, but it's not there on the left. Has he ever been lame? Not truly lame, no. Okay. Yeah, because generally if they have bumblefoot, it's quite painful. It's red and it's swollen and actually the animal's quite uncomfortable, but Lucky's not really batting an eyelid there, are you? To be honest, there's good flexibility there. Yeah. There's absolutely no pain or discomfort. There's no swelling or redness. There's no discharge. Yeah. So, yes, it's definitely different from the other side. Yeah. But if it's not causing him any functional problem, I don't yeah. see any reason why you can't finally be released. That's yeah. great news. And he seems to like you a lot, Jack, and you must have developed quite a strong bond over a year, because that must be a long time for any inpatient. Yeah, possible. yeah, he's probably one of the longest patients we've had. So yeah, we've got a bit of a bond, probably more love-hate relationship, but <laughs> I really like Lucky, but he probably hates the sight of me now after everything he's been through. It's been a long road to recovery for the young swan, but a clean bill of health means he'll spend a final night at the hospital before being released back into the wild tomorrow. He's making me nervous right there. You said be careful of the beak and now I know yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> At least buy me a drink first. Seriously. <laughs> The next morning, it's an early start for Scott, Jack and Harriet. And it's Lucky's big day. You seem a yes, bit emotional Lucky, today. <laughs> Thank you. Are you all right? Yeah. Your little boy's leaving flying the nest. He is indeed flying the nest. Today's a really exciting day. Lucky the swan, after over a year's worth of rehabilitation here at the Wildlife Hospital, it's time for him to be set free. Come on then, should we go and find you a lovely big reservoir to swim in? Yes? Let's go. <laughs> Lucky is being released along with another swan that's also been rehabilitated. There's Lucky. Okay. Come on then. Moment of the truth. Hey. Come on. Let's go and see Uncle Lloyd. <laughs> hey, he's got a lovely bit of leg jewellery for you. Hey. So here is uh, the man of the hour. This is Lucky. Let's give him his, his, his leg ring. So we've got that yep. unique number. Yeah. That's going to be Lucky's number now. We squeeze that on and then hopefully the next time we hear about Lucky, he's doing something good, maybe back breeding and got young again and well, That would be incredible. Well. So, yeah. there we go. That's all done, so Lucky is ready to start his life again. Come on then, Lucky. Let's Bye, go. Lucky. Let's go. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, bless him. Yeah. It's been a year, yeah. so... Such a long time. Look at that. That's what freedom looks like, hey? Eh? <laughs> Must be an incredible moment for you guys. Oh. You've done such a great job. I'm so proud of you. It's amazing. Oh, bless you. Lucky, say goodbye. Hey. Come on, look, let's get you gone. He's had a new lease on life because of you. Look how excited he is. Hey. Look. Yeah. Come on, then. Come on. Hey. You're making people cry now. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> let's let you go and enjoy yourself, shall we? What do you yeah. think? Good luck. Don't get yourself right. in any trouble. Yeah, good yeah. luck. Watch out for crossbows. Right. All right. Ready? Yeah. Wait a minute. No, oh, it's under you. Mm. There you go. Well, then, lucky Lou. Off you go, mate. Oh, oh. step oh. there. <laughs> 
Good luck, buddy. To sort of see them now back into the wild where they belong, you must be chuffed. This is why you do it. Yeah. Feeling's fantastic, but it also feels like your babies have left the nest. It's an incredible thing that you do for wildlife because you put all this effort into them and you don't expect anything back. What you expect is to see what we see today, which is them enjoying their freedom. Yeah, yeah, all I really expect is them to be back in the wild where they belong. Yeah. That's what we do it for, so. You got your wish? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lucky really is like the true dream story of like why you do this job and just to see such a sick animal come through with such a horrific injury to completely turning him round and letting him be released back into the wild is just amazing and it really is what the job's all about. It's been such an amazing few days up here in Leicestershire. I've loved working with these incredible wildlife warriors. It's such inspiring work they do and I'm just really happy to have been a part of it and I hope I'll be back very soon. So let's just hope that Lucky stays lucky, hey? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Hopefully he doesn't come back anytime soon. Yeah. In Richmond, a lively patient has arrived at the practice. Sounds ferocious, Abigail, she does, doesn't, doesn't she? she? <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Don't be fooled. <laughs> Good morning. Abby has brought in Bella because the 15-week-old golden cocker spaniel pup has an injured tail. <laughs> Come on, you. Come on, you. Yes, you get that toy. Let's go. Into the consult room. Come on, you. Hey. Come on. She's a bit of a handful. She is. She, she is. is. She looks like butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. But, yes. Uh, she's got a, a lot of attitude, a lot okay. of character. Yes. So tell me why you're in today. So we've just started going on walks since she's had all her jabs. Yeah. And, you know, she's very rambunctious, running around, playing. And then when we were coming back, I tripped over her. Ooh. And it was only watching her walk around later that I noticed her tail was drooping. Right. Whereas normally it's up and wagging. Okay. It's sort of hanging and the second half just sort of drops off. So normally you kind of get that sort of happy, happy windscreen wiper. Yes, yes. And at the moment it's sort of like a it's sad flower, like, isn't it? Yes, that needs a good water. It does. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if it was something that could be fixed yeah. now, I didn't want to wait and see what happened. Yeah. And if then in a week's time they said, oh, well, you know, maybe if we'd seen it sooner, we could have done yeah. something. Yeah. I completely understand. Yeah. I really do. And I always think it's why babies and puppies are covered in a little bit of extra squinch yeah. for those kind <laughs> of accidents yeah. when they happen. It's the insurance policy of nature to yeah. get them through yeah. being babies. Yeah. Abby is a classic new mum. She's incredibly anxious and she also feels incredibly guilty. <laughs> She's very, very worried, and I'm hoping today I'll be able to appease her concerns. Let's see your tail, baby girl. Let's see. Oh, dear. Yes. Sad, isn't it? Very sad-looking tail. It's a very good description of it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's pop you back up. Come here, baby. Come here, Bella, come. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. All right, so if I get just to hold around the shoulders there, that's it. So a little bit of a cuddle, and I'm just going to have a little feel. Bella, good girl. Come back. Bella. I know. Come on. Oh, right, so getting sort of sore and sore as we move towards on, the tip. It's all right, Bella. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, it's all right. nice little bit, sweetie. It's all right, Bella. Nice little bit. It's quite important all this stuff. Oh, my gosh. So as much as that might be distressing, pain is actually a good thing, okay, because it shows that she can feel it. All right. If she couldn't feel that and she was being happy as Larry, then we should be gravely concerned that she can feel it. All right. I'm sorry to upset you. It's OK. Yeah, these things do happen. Puppies, yeah, they're trouble. Yeah, in Don't a good worry. Way. Don't in worry. God <laughs> oh, bless you. Right. So what we need to do is to perform an X-ray, obviously, yeah. to be able to assess the spine as it goes into the tail and just see, is there anything that we need to correct? Yeah. If there isn't anything on the X-ray and it's a neurological issue, then sometimes 
it can just be that there's a halt in transmission of the sensors. It's kind of like if you've got a garden hose and you put your foot on it, the water won't be able to transmit from one end to the other. And once that swelling has gone away, that inflammation reduces, the foot comes off the hose, and now there's transmission of nerve impulses back up to the brain and Bella wags her tail again. So if that was never to improve, then worst case scenario would be amputation. Yeah, that's the thing that kills me. Yeah. I'm really hoping that it will fix itself or some intervention will write it. It'd just be so sad if she lost it. Well, let's hope she can keep it. I, yeah, I hope so. Really hope so. It's an agonizing wait, but equally I feel we're doing everything that we can. Well, if you say goodbye to a little girl. All right, Bella, see you in a minute. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Good girl, good girl, Bella, good girl. See you later, Abby. See you later. I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, I just want her to be better and not in pain. Thank you, thank you. That's my nose. Look at that. Look at your great big belly. You're so cute. In Richmond, so it's an cute. exciting day for one of Scott's longtime clients, devoted pet owner Claire. So they're not ready to come out yet. Three-year-old Betty is a rare Celium Terrier and is expecting her first litter of pups. And you're going to be slowing down even more carrying all that around. Celium Terriers were hugely popular in the 40s and 50s. The royal family had them, loads of Hollywood stars had them. But in recent years, Celium numbers have declined so much, they're now classified as a vulnerable breed. I can't save the breed in one go, but I can make a contribution, and they are such lovely pets. Oh, you're the lickiest dog on the planet. <laughs> Don't you? Yes. Yes. Mwah. It's a shame that more people aren't able to benefit from having one of these lovely dogs in their life. Claire searched throughout the UK to find a Celium dad for Betty's brood. Betty's puppy daddy is called Hector, lives down in Devon. I took her down there six weeks ago after having had all sorts of blood tests to determine the right time to go. And it was pretty much love at first sight. They were very keen on each other. Well, the long and the short of it is they were at it before I'd finished my cup of tea. <laughs> Come on then, off we go. Go and see Scotty, see what's in your tummy. With Betty's pregnancy now well advanced, it's time for a visit to Scott to get her checked over, to make sure everything's going to plan. This way. I'm terrified about her having the puppies, so it's going to be really emotional. Good girl. Go on then. But Betty and I are doing this together. Neither of us have done it before. Um, so yeah, we're learning as we go. I've got the internet and she's got Mother Nature. <laughs> you see Scott? Let's go. Oh, why? she's stunning. Oh, you're gorgeous. <gasps> Back at you his Richmond so practice, cool. Scott and you Nurse Jess are, are about to x ray so Puppy beautiful. Bella's tail, which was injured when her owner accidentally tripped over her in the park. That looks a bit sad. Mm. We need to give you a sedation to keep you still. And then we need to take some x-rays, mm. see what's going on. Sounds good. I'm just going to push her against you. Bella's tail could be limp because the spinal cord is irreparably damaged. It's actually severed. So no longer any impulses from the tail going back to the brain. And unfortunately, that will lead to amputation. X-ray. It's all looking fine. Thankfully, I can't see any breaks. I can't see any dislocation. So given some time and some anti-inflammatories, I'm hopeful that Bella's little tail will start wagging again. A firm bandage will help support Bella's tail as it heals. There we go. One leopard print bandaged tail. <laughs> Quite the fashion statement now. Yeah, I hope it helps to do the job and this little girl's wagging very soon. 
Let's wake her up, shall we? Upstairs, Bella's owner, Abby, is waiting for news on the fate of her little girl's tail. Just pacing up and down. Um, yeah, just worrying. Hi. Here's your girl. Bella. So she's a bit sleepy at the moment, which is why she's not as enthusiastic as she normally is. There isn't anything to suggest either a dislocation or a fracture, and the tail will be wagging hopefully quite soon. Wagging hoping, properly? Wagging properly. Oh. I'm hopeful, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Bella. Bella. I think she's going to be just fine. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Bye, gorgeous. See you later. Bella. See you later. Can't wait to, for it to be right to rain. Bella, heel. Bella, come. Bella, come. Come on, then. Let's go. In Here Richmond, Claire are. and her very pregnant pooch, Betty, are arriving at the practice. Here we are. Hello, Hello. expecting grandma. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Really good. Here she is. Wow, who's been eating all the pies? Uh, well, I'm hoping that it's... Well, I know it's not pies, it's puppies. You think it's puppies? I think it's puppies. All right. Well, come on then, you. Let's waddle on into the consult room, shall come we? Come on, then. Let's come go on. this way. Come on, can you fit through the door? <laughs> oh, no! Come on! It's, it's all, all right! Good Sorry, girl. I'll stop the fat jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw Claire was quite a surprise. She brought in her Mancoon cat, Chip, and I had to investigate a lump in his abdomen. Oh, my God, look at that! It's the biggest fur ball I've ever seen in my entire life. But this time around, it's Betty's tummy that's in the spotlight, but I've got a much better idea about what I should be expecting. She's got a particular way of sitting now, <laughs> with her back legs wide apart, and her tummy drops down between her legs, and she just looks like, oh, really? I remember that with my wife, all three of them, like, that, that, the pregnant sort of sit, you know, the woman like that. Yeah, it's exactly like... <laughs> and there's always a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> Is she doing that? Yes, she's doing that. Poor baby. So I'm going to listen to your heart, missus, and then the exciting bit of listening to your baby's <gasps> hearts. That is exciting. Good. Yeah, sounds very good. Obviously, being pregnant puts a lot of strain on a yeah, dog's yeah. body. So um, the, the, the heart at the okay. moment sounds A-OK -okay and absolutely fine. So I think what we need to do is to perform an ultrasound yep. and just have a look for healthy puppies with heart beating and just to make sure they're all forming nicely. We want it all to go nice and smoothly, don't we, Bets? Yeah. After a full physical exam, I can see that Betty is in perfect physical health. She's in great shape. And now it's the really exciting bit. We find out exactly how many puppies she might have inside her. Okay. Good girl. Okay. All right, sweetheart. So this will be a little bit cool. All right, Claire, so that's one of her babies. Oh! Oh, my God. oh, wow, look, wow. look at that. Wriggling, did you see? Ribs. That one's really active. That one's going to be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a special moment for any parent seeing their babies for the very first time. Oh, oh is that a yawn? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little yawn. <laughs> seeing them wriggling around and almost waving their little paws at Grandma. Claire's ecstatic. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, that's amazing. Hi, Nana. Hello. You look very young. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that's all going on in Betty's tummy. I thought I might get a heartbeat. I didn't think you'd be able to actually see their faces and their spines and then the wiggling legs. Oh my God, it was just so amazing. But you can see there's one, two, three little bundles of joy. There's one. Oh. You got that? Yeah. So top just left. Like pop in. <laughs> yeah. And then there's yeah. also one top right. Okay. Is that a different one to the one you saw before? I think so, yeah. Wow. But as you can see, how closely packed they are. Yeah, I'm losing count. Now it's just a waiting game and I've told Claire she can call me day or night and I'll be there in a heartbeat because I know she'll be worried and I want to be by her side for when the moment comes. Rest now. Because okay. you won't yeah. be having much rest very soon. No. Nor will you. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
good seeing you, but I wasn't expecting to see you here so soon. Hey? A few days later, Bella has unexpectedly been brought back to the clinic to see Scott after re-injuring her droopy tail. Hey, Nay. Hi, Scott. Hi, Bella. What are you doing back? Hey, what are you doing back? Unfortunately, she was playing rough with another dog in the park, which probably wasn't the best idea when you got an injured tail. Yeah. I, I just put something temporary on for the minute. Yeah. But. Yeah, hopefully it's not too bad. Hey, hopefully it's not too bad. Oh dear. Yeah. That's horrendous. Two major tail injuries in less than a week. She has an awful injury. She has what's called a degloving injury. So basically the end of the covering of the tail has literally come off. So it's basically like if she had a finger and you just took the tissue off the finger, you're left with the bones. And that's exactly what that is. So what are you thinking? Well, the battle is lost. We're gonna to have to amputate a tail. Oh, so annoying. I just so wanted that dog to have a tail, but now it's become infected. That skin has died away. All right, well, let's give you some anesthetic, my sweet, and let's see how much tail we can salvage. So I've made a skin incision just slightly further down the tail than where I'm going to amputate the bones themselves from the column. I've done that just so that I've got something to wrap over the end of the tail. And then I just have to cut through that space between the two vertebrae, cut through the cord, and then close it up. So not too difficult, just a bit sad. Uh, that's the degloved part of the tail. And then this bit is that floppy bit. So hopefully that's the last bit of tail I need to remove from little Bella. Now I just need to make it look nice. It's a shorter tail, but it's a healthy tail. And I know that she'll go on to make a full recovery. And yes, she'll still be able to wag. That's that. All right, I'll put a little dressing on first and then wake this little girl up, shall we? Poor Abby is just beside herself with concern, but now I'm very happy that I am giving her the peace of mind in knowing that Bella will be just fine, even though she's got a shorter tail. There we go, well done. I know, it's not nice, is it? Good girl. All right, you don't have to change your name. You're still Bella the Beautiful, aren't you? Once the hair grows back, no, I'll not notice. girl. You're doing so well. Go on, well done. A week after her ultrasound, Celium Terrier Betty's labour has started. I've just seen a foot. <laughs> I'm scared and it would be really good to have Scott here, so um, hopefully he'll be here soon before the first one comes. But the first puppy isn't waiting for Scott. That's two feet. He'll squeeze his head out, baby. I feel I need to pull the puppy out, but I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I do wish Scott was here. You're doing so well. Keep going, baby. Oh! Good God, that one's got a spot in the middle of his back. Scott is on the way, but traffic is heavy. Hi, Claire, you are right. Hi. First puppy's out apart from the head. So Claire has called him for some mobile support. Through underneath her. There we go. Yay, well done. Yes. I'm happy breathing. OK. Uh, uh, no. If there's any stuff in the mouth, just sort of wipe that away and then give it a good rub on the chest. Come on, come on, come on. You all right? I don't know. Yeah, so rub on the chest quite firmly and have the head facing downward. That's it. Okay. Come on. 
Oh, there we go. That was a breath. All right, are you okay? Yeah, he think he's okay. I'm asking if you're okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> All right, I'll be there as soon as I can, okay? Okay, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Bye. That was incredible and horrifying and terrifying and amazing all at the same time. Oh, it's so exciting. You're a mummy, Betty. Well done. But Betty has no time to relax. You're right, B. I'm going to start pushing again. The second puppy is on its way. Oh, she's pushing so hard. Good girl, Betty. Come on, puppy number two. You can really see how much her, her whole body has to strain as the contraction goes through and, and just every muscle is screaming. It really looks terribly violent. That one is enormous. This pup is born without a hitch. Betty, you're doing amazingly. She's a superstar. Look at your two babies. Oh, oh I'm glad to see you. <laughs> it's all right, They're the cavalry's all right. here. So, uh, yes, exactly. Don't you worry. <laughs> Come in. Scott has arrived just in time to help the third little Celium Terrier into the world. Come on, Betty. I'm just going to give her a bit of a hand. Whoa. There we go. There we go. There we go. Nice, healthy, big one, that one. OK, Betty, there you are, honey. And then there were three. Seconds later... Oh, what? Puppy number four. She just popped out another puppy. Oh, she did? Wow. <laughs> that was I can't believe work. that just happened. Wow, that was speedy. She didn't even seem to be having contractions. No. It's almost so like that, okay? the big one's blo broken the... Yeah, uh, the dam. The now they're all flooding out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But an hour later... Just absolutely no signs of contraction. Betty's labour with puppy number five has come to a worrying halt. So how big or small should be the gap? You hope for every 30 minutes that they're like little buses coming through. Yes. But anything longer than you start tapping your watch. OK. Where's my bus? Where's my puppy? Where's my puppy, Betty? Where's puppy number five? In Richmond, four of Betty's pups have arrived. But now labour with her final pup has stopped. So you've got a decision to make. Either we can stimulate her further or we can use some drugs to do that. So I think we okay. should probably... Okay, yeah, no, I would definitely go for stimulation before drugs. Yeah. Let's go. All right, Come on. lots of encouragement. Up you go, 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 good girl. Up you go, up you so the whole point of this is basically to get that tummy just moving around and to get everything sort of jostling and moving, reminding Betty that she's still pregnant. It's yeah. like when the pregnant women get walked up yeah. and down the hallway. That's what we're doing right now. Good girl. But Betty is clearly exhausted and still not showing any signs of contracting. She's so tired, she just wants to go to sleep. I'm tired and want to go to sleep as well. It's been a very long day. Sorry, baby. Uh, you're looking all comfortable. Yeah, though. you're looking Unfortunately, that's very the relaxed. point, is we have to try and make a you a little bit relaxed. uncomfortable. Yeah. So this was some nasty injections. Yeah. Mm? I can barely feel the puppy. It's right at the end of my index finger, so it's a long way off, and yet Betty is nearly two hours from the last puppy, and that's when we start getting into the danger zone. Scott has no choice but to give Betty an injection of oxytocin to try to stimulate contractions. Good girl. So that should work quite quickly. In the next okay. minute or two, we should see some fairly strong contractions, hopefully. Let's get her up again. Keep pushing. Good Brave girl, girl, that's it. Good girl, That's good a good girl. girl, that's great. Oh, pop back in. Are we nearly there? So just the head is coming into the pelvic canal and then it's just sliding back uh. and she stops. So she just, just needs to do a couple of good, strong pushes and we are. Good girl. There's a little bit of blood this time around, which is uh, just a bit different from the others. That's it. Good girl. That's it. Come on. Every single contraction is getting weaker and weaker because she's getting weaker and weaker. Come on, buddy. I really need this puppy out now. Come on. I just want this puppy out. Come on. That's a good girl. That's it. You're doing really well. Come on. Just, God. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a good girl. That's it. 
With this puppy in the position that it's in now, with its head stuck out. Okay, so on the next push, we're just gonna try and pull this puppy yeah. out, okay? It's making little breaths, trying to breathe, trying to survive, but still well and truly stuck. Come on, come on, don't give up. This puppy is really compromised, and I'm just really worried that it is not gonna come out alive. Go on, 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 go on. Come on, push, 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 push. If you pull it out too hard, you can separate its vertebrae and its neck and kill it. You can break its legs, you can do all sorts of things, so you just can't pull them too hard. So it's so frustrating. I know, sweetie, I need one big push from you. Come, Come on. on. Go. Good I know, girl, good I know, girl, I know. good I'm girl. I'm sorry. She's a really tough dog. She's a fighter. And she's still fighting to get that puppy out. Okay, here we go. Here oh! We go. Yeah, okay. So give me that towel really yep. quickly. Yep. Ask me the stethoscope there, please. This puppy needs to breathe very quickly. I don't think that one's gonna make it. Oh my God. Oh. Hey, there's a breath. Oh. Okay, we've got a heartbeat. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I really thought you were gone a little bit. Come on, just give me another one. There we go. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh my God. No, I'm never doing this again. No, <laughs> no, no. No. This is enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my God. That was, that was intense. You can go back to your mother. There you go. Have that one. Keep an eye on her. She's trouble. You know? <laughs> Good girl. I didn't think that one was going to live. Really didn't think it. It's been a marathon labour for three-year-old Betty. But number five is the last of her puppies. And now the new mum can finally relax. Let's just see if the milk bar's open. You got some milk there? Good girl. There we go. Successful evening. Long evening. Yes. Pretty All cool. a good outcome. Yeah, thank goodness, eh? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. What a day. <laughs> very long, very exciting and in parts a completely terrifying day. And we did it. We added five extra Celium Terriers to the world. Betty is so amazing, and I love her even more than I did before. The joys of birth, eh? I don't know how people do it regularly. Well, that's the thing, is that no woman that's given birth ever tells the truth about birth. Because <laughs> no one would ever do it if they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've been through it times five. Yes. Mm. Oh, well done, Bessie. Yeah. Hello, sweetheart. Hey. Hello. Hey, you might not have much of a tail, but it's definitely still wagging, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Come on, then. Should we go and see Mummy? Next day, accident-prone puppy Bella is ready to go home after the operation to remove the badly injured part of her tail. Come on then, should we go and see Mum? Hmm? Come on, that's a good girl. Good girl. I think I've worn a hole in my floor, <laughs> just pacing around the house and not knowing what to do with myself. <sighs> just, yeah, just worrying so much about her. Who is she? There she is. Hello. Oh, Bella. <laughs> Bella, Bella. There's your girl. <laughs> so you can have the happy, smiley collared end. <laughs> so no worse for wear. A 
as you can see. Oh, and under nice. there, you can feel she still has a very waggy tail. It's just a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. Yeah, oh, but not belly. too bad. It's still the most hey. beautiful, beautiful belly. Now the end of Bella's tail is gone. We just have a lovely, healthy, shortened tail. All that guilt can just be put away now. I know that Bella's gonna make a full recovery and hopefully Abby can have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Oh gosh. So a little bit of time that she'll have the cone of shame on. Yep. Just okay. so she leaves it alone yep. and allows it to heal. And then fingers crossed, we'll see you back yeah. out in the parks of Richmond yes. <laughs> with a tail that still wags yep. and a happy puppy. Oh, thank you. Oh, Bella. Obviously, I was devastated when I saw what had happened. It was hard to get my head around that, but I know that she's not in pain, that she's been looked after, that it'll heal. Yeah, it's just like a wave of relief now. Oh, my gosh. The joy of puppies, oh eh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Stress. Oh, I want to kiss her, but I can't get my head in the cone. <laughs> Come on, Bubba. Here we go. Come on in. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. <laughs> How are you? She's so excited. Ah, oh, such a friendly little thing, aren't you? Hey. Scott's next patient is Bo, and owner Tracy says the Staffordshire Bull Terrier is the love of her life. Bo means the world to me, she does. She's eight years of age now, and I've had her since like she was a puppy, baby to me. You know what I mean? So like, I've got a few years ahead as well. And what's she in for today, Tracy? She's in here for her eyes. Her eye keeps shutting up and swelling. Okay. And we're like, very worried that, um, you know, she could go blind. All right, well, let's go and have a little look at Bo in the console room, shall we? All hey, right gorgeous. Then. Come on, then. In you come. That's it. Come on, this way. That's a good girl. So you're mainly concerned about the fact that she's doing this sort of winking and blinking. Yeah, and plus she does rub it with her, um, with her paw. Does she? So yeah, she does. If it gets really bad, she's like that. Right. So she's definitely uncomfortable. Yeah, very uncomfortable. OK. So it just sounds like she's just irritated that yeah. there is something in her eye. It's kind of... You know, when you get that annoying eyelash that gets oh, no. in your eye and you're sort of mm. trying to blink it out. It seems like what she's sort of trying to do. Yeah. So this um, eye is a little bit whiter. And this one's quite red. Yeah, that one's... Quite irritated. Yeah, that's the one has been irritating. Her lately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Wow, that's incredible. There are some very, very tiny, like it's almost invisible to the naked eye, yeah. black hairs that are coming out the eyelid, the rim of the eyelid, so not classic eyelashes. These are actually abnormal hairs that are growing and they're actually rubbing on her cornea, the protective surface of her eye. So that would be incredibly irritating yeah, uh, and yeah. painful. Yeah. Okay, so Tracy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna to have to perform surgery on your girl. Okay. The only way to correct this is with surgery. Now I'll either have to try and remove some of the follicles if I can see them, or if I can't, you can't just pluck the hair because the hair will regrow. What you need to do is to actually kill the follicle, the roots of the hair, so that it doesn't grow back. I think the other concern, which we can't gloss over, of course, is her age. Mm. Right? Now, she is a healthy girl, but she is eight, and obviously at that point we start seeing more issues with regards to anaesthetic risk, okay? So it is just something that you do need to kind of okay. take into account. What we'll do then is I will take her downstairs mm -hmm. and we'll do the anaesthetic and perform the removal of those pesky hairs, hey? But it does mean that you're going to have to be a little bit brave. Okay. I'm worried. Of course, I'm very worried because I don't want her to lose her sight. But I know she's in the best hands, so it's going to get done. All right. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. You love this dog very much, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. We'll be all right, won't we? I think she knows it too, don't mm -hmm. you? Hey. Have you got your mummy around your little paw? <laughs> Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm, 
Okay, all right, that'll calm you down a little bit. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Thank you very much. <laughs> Surgery for eight-year-old Staffy Bo is about to get underway. Hiya. Hey. Hello. How's it going? Going good. Who's this? This is the world's lickiest dog. Aww. <laughs> Scott will be performing delicate surgery on Bo's eyelid, and vet Phoebe and nurse Gina will be assisting. She actually has something called ectopic scylla, almost invisible black hairs coming right out of the edge of the eyelid. Okay. And they're rubbing on her eye constantly. You know what it's like when you get an eyelash stuck in your eye and you can't get it out, or you get a little bit of sand or grit, and it's so irritating, but at least you have the opportunity to remove it. For poor Bo, she's lived with these hairs that are rubbing right into her eye. So I do need to remove the ectopic scylla that I found. All right, should we give you an anaesthetic, baby? Yeah. Now she's quite an old girl, she's eight years old, so we do need to watch her. Okay, sweetie, here we go. Phoebe, what we're gonna do is just place a couple of stay sutures, basically, just so you can help to lift the eyelid sort of up and out, really, mm. um, and allow me just to see what I need to see. And also, because we're using a pen to freeze things, we don't want to freeze her eyes. Mm. They're very nice, just mm -hmm. as they are, so we don't need to change them at all. Great, okay, that's really good. It's using this contrast of the white really makes it easier to see. Mm. Actually, I think it's five. You can see just some little ones coming out of the same hole. So There's two there. Oh. Two, four, five, and six, maybe even. Six. I'm going to use this little piece of kit, which is basically a cryosurgery pen. What it does is it actively freezes the cells with little shards of ice, basically. Sort of blows the, the cells apart. We do um, freeze and then we thaw and then we freeze again. And fingers crossed, what that will do is not only help us remove the hair, but stop it from going back. This procedure really requires a lot of patience and dexterity, but also really good eyesight. You really need to see very clearly what you're freezing. And these hairs are microscopic, so I really do need to focus not only my skills, but also my eyes as well. Can you see it changing the surface? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, but it works quite deeply. It can work a few millimetres in, so what I'm going to try and do now is just see how easy the hairs come out. I think that might tell us if it's been killed or not. Okay. Mm. Did you see that? Yeah, that came out really easily, didn't it? Did, it? didn't it? Almost like, you know, if hairs get lazy, they sort mm. of get killed. Um, and then that just sort of pulled out very, very easily. There wasn't any tug needed. No. Oh, yeah. So mm. that's just falling out, isn't it? That's. Yeah, that's reassuring. It is quite reassuring, isn't it? There's two there, so that's five now. Let's see how they're separate, see that? And then, so it was six after all. Mm. Good, okay. That's great. Take these out? Yep. It's a tricky little procedure, but actually really quite rewarding. Hopefully it feels good for you. Hey. Right, Wake let's wake her up. up. In this particular surgery, it's one that you can see will make a massive difference to the quality of life of the patient, and that's what it's all about. Oh. Oh. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Singing like a staffy. Let's put her in bed with her teddy. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. You all right? See? Oh, you're back to your licky self then. That's good. That's good. Should we go and see Mummy? Bo has now slept off the anaesthetic after her eye surgery and is ready to go home with owner Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Hi, Baba. Hello. Is your little red riding hood back? She's been such a, yeah. an adorable, good girl. Been very vocal, like all staffies tend to be. <laughs> Haven't you, baby, eh? Hey? Yes. And she's hopefully now discomfort-free, removed oh, all of so. those nasty 
uh, ectopic psyllid, those abnormal hairs growing in her eyelids, and used a very cool bit of kit to do it. Although I haven't been able to change the, the licking very much, have I? No. That's, uh, that comes as standard, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Okay. Oh, you love your mummy, don't you? Okay. At the moment, the cryosurgery looks like it's a complete success and the eyes look perfect, but we will see some cell death because of that freezing process. So her eyes are likely to get a bit puffy and a bit sore over the coming days, but after about a week, 10 days, her eyes should look perfect and no more hairs irritating her beautiful eyes. She's gonna have swollen eyes tomorrow, yeah? She will. She, her All eyes right. will be a little bit swollen, a little bit puffy, right. like she had a big night. But uh, <laughs> given a week or so, things will calm down yeah, and yeah. she'll be back to her beautiful yeah. self, but far more comfortable. Scott's done a great job. I'm really pleased. She's really happy. I'm happy. I just want to get home. I'm starting to wait and settle down, have a cuddle, and I'll see you watch TV. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, ladies. Wasn't that good, eh? Was that good? Was that good? Yeah. All right, then we go home now. <laughs> Then, here we go. Two weeks later in Richmond, here we go. some much anticipated visitors. Oh my god! <laughs> That's hey. amazing. Aren't they adorable? And they're getting a warm welcome from practice manager Maz and receptionist Kirsty. Oh, thank you. Betty, well done. How they're clever. Huge. Are you? They have grown a lot. That's She's been working cute. hard feeding them. Claire has brought Betty and Is her puppies okay? in for their first health check. I've been coming to this practice for such a long time and they all feel kind of like extended family and this is something that's happened not just to me but to everybody I know here. So it's exciting to bring them in. With those girlish screams of delight, I knew it could only be one person. How are you, yes, gorgeous? there is puppy cuddling going on. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you. Look at you, proud mum, grandma. Tired <laughs> mum, <laughs> grandma. It's a lovely moment to see Betty and all the puppies happy and well after the, well, quite stressful birth. Come on then, Too let's get bright. in. Come, Come on. on. Come on. <laughs> so to see them back today, Claire looks much more relaxed and Betty seems happy as well. It's perfect. At least Betty won't have to go through it again. No, you're all right, Betty. You don't have to do that again. You've done your bit for yes. the future of the Celium Terrier. Yeah. Well yes. done. Well done, girl. Hey. So today is the first time Scott will have seen them since the birth and since he helped Betty to deliver her babies safely. So just remind me, which one's number one? It was this one, wasn't this it? This is number one. That's number okay. two. Yeah. This is the one with almost that little panic button on the... Yes, that is panic button. <laughs> the one that you pressed and then called me. Yes. <laughs> In a panic. Exactly. Yes. I was super anxious for about a week. It was just so traumatic. Wow, 720 grams already. And he's the smallest. I'm OK now. Betty's into a routine with feeding them. So it's all calm now until they start running around and creating mayhem. Your eyes are open. Hello, Hello world. world. Why don't we go in order, so have three and, and number four. Number three. I remember you. This was the first one that I got to meet. Yeah. Eight. Number four. Yeah. Okay, Mum. After examining all the brothers and sisters, I finally get to puppy number five. Yeah. There we are. I'm going to call you heart attack. Because <laughs> you nearly gave us us. Shit, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's very emotional to see her because it was such a difficult birth. But, uh, we got the result, didn't we? And then we've got you. Yeah, she's eh? presenting no problems at all. No, that's amazing. Fighting fit. Yeah. As a vet, you go through lovely highs like this, but also really deep lows where you lose patience. So in this instance where I know that my presence made a massive impact, yes, you lose patience, but this one, I saved. You're perfect, aren't you? Yes, you are, which is a miracle. Get you home and give them another feed. Go fetch. And ten weeks after her partial tail amputation, little Bella is back enjoying plays in the park with her owner, Abby. Drop. Good girl. 
She's bounced straight back. You wouldn't even know anything had happened. Of course, I'm still traumatized, but she's, <laughs> she's right as rain. That's it. Come on, come this way. And a special friend has arrived for a puppy play date. Hello, Abby. Hello. Hello, Bella. <laughs> How are Hello. you? I'm fine. How are you? Very good to see you. I'm really good to well. See you too. Um, I just introduced you to Scully. Hello, yeah. Scully. Oh, little Bella. Today, because of the fact that poor little Bella has lost quite a lot of her puppyhood, being injured and then going through the recovery process, I thought that I'd uh, lend a helping hand to her socialisation by bringing along my little fluff ball, Scully. So nice to see Bella playing. And look at that, a waggy tail. I know, it hasn't stopped. Bella's tail looks absolutely great. It's wagging very happily. Hello, baby. Mm, I know, I love you too. Mm. Yeah. Let me see what you've got. OK, well, you can chew my ear whilst I have a look at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's healed beautifully yeah. well, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Really yeah. great. And I could see as I walked up, yeah, her tail yeah, is standing right up, up again. Yeah. So yeah. it's back to attention. It hey? is, yes. Yeah, very good. So things are looking up. Thank goodness. Her tail <laughs> and our mood. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no tears today. No. <laughs> I was just beside myself. I, I don't think I've cried so much. I couldn't even say the, the word amputate for three weeks. Yeah, it was very traumatic for, yeah. for me more than Bella. Yeah. She's, she's recovered. She's, she's no worse for wear, yeah. is she? I mean, she's... Um, she's right as rain. She, happy, enjoying yeah. the park. Yeah. Hey, do you want to play with your little playmate then? Hey? Yes. I think Aww. you should. Now, Scully, can you be gentle? Because I've only got this much towel to play with. <laughs> 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 She's just so loving and sweet and my life has improved immeasurably with her and she's still absolutely beautiful and I wouldn't be without her, tail or no tail. <laughs> happy, happy tail. Yeah. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.